Oh. Here, here, hold on, here. Let's uh, oh. switch to the. What is it? Stream incoming. Where? Which one is it? I have no idea. Oh, it's right here. What's going on, everybody? Oh. This is not going to work for the mic right there. All right. Let's oh, just... well, it's, we're only going to be two guy in it most of the time, so yeah, that'll be fine. Cool. All right, folks. Uh, welcome to St. Lotus 9. Guten Morgen. I am not Mark. I am Stephen Hagen. You can adjust that as you see fit. Yeah, uh, I, I know how to do it. Uh, so you go to the uh, little notepad thing down there. You'll find it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, I am not. I'm Brandon. Uh, it is a pleasure to finally be in the commentary booth rather than uh, participating in my eighth consecutive one of these. Uh, I got some great sleep last night. Yeah, I did yeah. not. I did not stay up until five in the morning, stressing about uh, so the pick what, order of fetches. What you're saying is you get special Brandon for commentary, and we also with us today have. Uh, I am Peter Kritzberger, better known as Halt. I am Reptar from MTG Cabalcast for oh. my second consecutive VRD commentary. All right, so we're going to be swinging around with the three of us today. Uh, we've got pick order here for St. Lotus 9. And Dan Zelinski, Big Dan, he is a um, previous winner um, at least once. He Before we started tiebreaker yeah. rules, he was in a three-way tie with Elaine and I in, in, with Infect in VRD2. And mm -hmm. he's been near the top since then as well. Yeah, he, uh, he, has, he tends to employ a strategy that is very effective mm -hmm. for VRD, which is uh, taking blue interaction uh, very early and stacking it up nice and hot and then mm -hmm. filling out the deck with other stuff that nobody will ever want to draft because you're not going to draft Glistener Elf no. if you are not decidedly playing Infect. And if somebody else is, you're not going to get into it either. So... Taking a force of will, a mana drain, force of negation, uh, all of this kind of like free interaction to uh, prevent your might of old prosa, let's say, from uh, from going off. Uh, it's a, it's a very effective strategy, and he's gotten at least five and two twice yeah. with it. And he's um, like, and he did wheels once to a much less uh, <laughs> successful run. Correct. So yeah. uh, I talked to him earlier today, and he said, you know, there's about a forty percent chance that I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. Not necessarily Infect, because he that's what he's known for, because he's, he's done it yeah. two out of two times. However, uh, it's just draft the blue stuff and see what's open. All right, yeah, yeah. we're going to go ahead and give them the go-ahead to start this, and I'm going to talk through as we go a little bit about our player base here. Yeah. And then, uh, so... We, we see action there. So next up is Mike Viviano in the two seat. Uh, Mike went, I think, four and three the first time. He had a, kind of a green, um, mono greenish green, good stuff. I think it was a, a green red uh, land ish. Okay, deck. yeah, Renaissance. and uh, that was a draft. Uh, I believe that was VRD four, uh, or no, sorry, VRD five. five yeah, uh, where he drafted Dark Depths. In the third second round. or third round, and, someone and on the wheel, I'm sorry, he picked Thespian Stage, yeah. and then on the wheel, somebody hate drafted Dark Depths. Dark Depths, which yeah. We, I genuinely don't think that we would ever like. No, the we table would not talk, see the, this. the table talk that person into it. Uh, yeah, we. And listen, it's it's not the first time. Okay, well, real I've quick, done that, real, and it's not the last time. Right, I've done, real I'll quick, do so it. here we have Mason. So Mason uh, is our two-time champ. Uh, recently, he's he's been here three times from Chicago, and he's he's gone. He's won twice. 
Uh, very good drafter, but playing a lot in the online. And Mason jumps, you know, we get the Lotus, we get the recall, the order of those changes. But mm-hmm. Crypt has been one that's been moving all around, coming from the Mason three spot all the way down to the second round. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, uh, personally, I believe that Mana Crypt is one of, uh, it is simultaneously highly respected by a lot of people, myself included, mm-hmm. and just kind of an afterthought to other people. Um, but as we saw, I believe it was in that same, uh, uh, it was not VRD5, I believe it was VRD6, uh, with John Michael, last name, uh, who Ryan. came in and uh, showed us, yeah, John Michael Ryan, who showed us the power of that, of Mana Crypt with a Splinter Twin kind of Kiki uh, Je- uh, Jeskai control shell, and it just just gets everything powered so quickly so like a mana crypt into a tinker that's just like if you have those two cards it's a turn one whatever Mm -hmm. where do you think crypt best fits in 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 this format because i had it in a control deck and it killed me a lot because a lot of people are familiar with crypt and commander which is 40 life so it's a lot less punishing oh look at this from uh from darian we've got a box emerald into an urza saga that's a that's a very early urza saga going over uh, a Mox Ruby because Mox Emerald, Mox Ruby. That's a very, it's a, it's a. You frequently end up with those two or if Pearl. you're going to get to Pearl, Pearl and Emerald is the other one. Pearl, Pearl Emerald yep. also happens quite frequently, but um, there's a saga. Would really Emerald cool. into Saga kind of signal fast bond later on? Um, it could. I'm not super familiar uh, with Darian's uh, drafting strategy or outlook. D- so Darian, in he's done a couple of. The um, St. Lotus Presents. Okay. Right. And the last time he did a lands deck, and it was a little unfocused, but mm-hmm. it it had some legs. And I think he's going that route again. I think he's trying a lands-ish strategy again. Yeah. Okay. And so we see right here uh, Jeff taking Teferi Time Raveler. As he said he would. Uh, he came in just a few minutes ago and said that's essentially what he's going to do if this is the seat that he got. Um, and I, uh, I res- respect it. It's uh, going to be pretty integral to his, uh, you can't interact with me yep. as I go off of my combo. Uh, it insulates him super well, yeah. prioritizing it over Narset. Yeah. Uh, we take, we see Heidi here with an early sword supply share. So what she did tell us was that, uh, part of her strategy was to take the best removal, um, best removal early so it's like um it's very similar to what we talked about with dan's strategy where you're taking the key components in terms of like the high efficiency high value removal and mm-hmm. then moving into the shell that you plan on playing uh could heidi have waited to pick up swords of posture almost certainly but like once again this kind of strategy uh does not matter what order it's being picked in. So you just take the cards that you know you're going to play and you know you're going to want, um, and it can pay off because at, a, at no point are you ever fighting over cards with anybody else, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do want to get back to the question that we started to muse on about where we see Crypt fitting in this format on the whole. And I, I, I personally don't think that it has a specific location because, as we mentioned per commander, it just helps juice up your early turns. But I do think it lends itself to a deck that wants to end the game quickly. So if you want to play a long controlling game, I think it's that's the only spot where it's bad. But if you can deal with it with a Tinker or a Transmute Artifact, a Welder, etc., then I think that's that makes it even more valuable for a control deck in the long run. Absolutely. Um, Mason picking up Time Walk. The walk. Yeah. Good, good stuff. Uh, yeah, I think um, Mana Crypt doesn't um it it makes the deck go burr but you have to be yeah. very conscientious about what you're drafting with it um in one of the vrds i played in i uh i picked up mana crypt early i think this is the one after i saw the value that uh, uh john michael got out of it mm-hmm. and i went into narset after that john ryan john john ryan <laughs> <laughs> i am confusing four different people right, at once it's uh, I saw the value that he got out of it, and I tried to go into that and then into uh, Narset, and my record was two and five or something like that. 
Mm-hmm. The next draft after that, I also happen oh, to get Viv- it very fortunately. Viviano jumping on the lands very, quick. very early. Yep. Uh, but uh, that next draft, I picked up a time or time walker, a planeswalker, uh, Dovin, and so that making sure that uh, Mana Crypt can pay to colorless for those powerful or tempo cards, so okay. you're getting the value and getting them on turn one. And yeah. Dan, Dan going for the Black Lotus into uh, Time Twister Hole Breacher. Hole Breacher, uh, yeah. I think it's really, like, it's a very strong combo. This didn't um, work out well for him last time he did it, though. Um, he didn't have Lotus, obviously. That's but. true. I mean, yeah. Lotus makes this a lot better, uh, obviously, because you can drop it on turn one, especially if you're going up against somebody with uh, hand disruption. And it mm-hmm. looks like we're going to have probably three decks with hand disruption this time. So here's, um, so we did some pre-conversations this time that we haven't done before, and so we have a little info, more info to the mindset. Normally, you only have one or two infos of mindset, yeah. right? Um, but I can tell. So talking to Jason about some of his thought lists, and then Heidi about her list, there was a potential clash, and it looks like that clash is going to happen. Um, yeah. yeah. So Jason was talking about kind of a white black dead man dead guy ale, mm-hmm. and he was talking about a white black red humans d- uh, disruption type list. Um, there's yeah. going to be a lot of clash yeah. between those. So it's going to be a question interesting there of who blinks, right? Because she's got the jet swords, uh, as someone noted uh, in there, you know, he's got the Pearl Thoughts. He's like the opposites going on. Yeah. Right? yeah. The, the, the nice part is between the two strategies, though, is that Heidi was mentioned that they were looking to do something a little more specifically with humans and that archetype, while Jason has stressed being more on uh, the taxes element, which plays right. to, I think, his strength in magic play style, which is a zero sum game. Mm-hmm. So Jason might not get the two mana Thalia that he wants, but he could easily walk away with Stoneforge Mystic yeah. and Mirren Crusader. Oh, well, maybe Jason's and... going to audible a little here. He, he maybe yep. I see some writing on the wall already. He says, okay, oh, yeah. That sword's Esper Sentinel. He's like, I don't want to fight for that. So, yeah. and that's a good place. I mean, Pearl, you can be in white, white, white black, green easy, or you could just, Pearl can just be. Um, maybe he, oh, maybe he ends up in the Rocky he's talking about. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I did. I was talking, uh, to Mark about this last night and it was floated that Jason was thinking about doing a Ponza thing. I think, Ponza, that's, yeah. I think that that is still on the table. It, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's still on the table. I don't think he's going to pull the trigger on it right. because I think that he's going to get in with these picks. And by the time he's at pick eight or nine, he's going to be like, I'm Jason. I love value. And so he's going to make sure that uh, yeah. you know, there's a home for all of these picks. So of interest here right now, uh, to me, as a, as a, and you, Brandon, as a Walker aficionados, yeah. is that Teferi is the only one to go so far. Normally we've seen an Oko go by this point. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we have Heidi who's told us that she plans on being roughly in Marty Humans. Uh, Jason has, you know, basically said that he's not going to be in blue. Uh, Max here with... Uh, Red mana and black mana. Who has and who, there goes the just, who dis- Shermine, dis- Mox diamond. Nice. nice. Okay. Nice. nice. That's that's good. good. That's uh, that's pretty. They discuss. Uh, Max discussed with us earlier that they were planning on doing um, uh, black, red, like uh, mid range. Let's but see. Just, if Jason. Yeah. Takes fast bond out from under Darian. I think um, that's the signal for Ponza. If Jason snakes fast bond here I, or I, on the wheel back. Yeah, I think that that is a pretty big tell. Yeah, no Karn is big. I mean, so Narset was mentioned earlier. I honestly think, Nar- in, in my previous article, I ranked Narset as the number two walker. I think Narset's dropped some for I, me. I don't, I, don't I, do really not believe, like, I do not believe that Narset is in the top five, personally. Yeah, and uh, Narset has probably been the most contentious planeswalker because of that. When early- it's good, it's good. When it's good, it's good. But yeah. that early representation uh, being picked by I you know Me. Elaine and you yeah. and those decks performing well and Narset having a lot to do with it but thank as, you Rob thank you very much Rob uh as those okay and now we see the tinker uh yeah. from Jeff Good it's a, honestly a late tinker as well um and Two to four. He, here's the thing cuz Mason just took Snapcaster Mage I think Mason is absolutely going to like eat everybody's lunch today he is going to benefit so much from the fact that we have like four people here who have almost certainly a late just demonstrated point. they're not going to be drafting any blue. And uh, so 
Dan being on the wheel and already going in on two different kind of like combo value pieces. Oh, world breach fourth. Wow, that's the highest breach has ever gone for sure. That is yeah. uh, not even close. Nobody's gonna snake Brain the uh, LED, right? I, I don't see anybody. I, 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 don't, I, see, I, don't, I don't see, see any it. of this table snake. See, I was just about to say, you know, because with his next two picks, Dan might very well take LED and uh, Echo of Beyonds. So this was his. Okay. This was the one he didn't do well with. Maybe he's figured out. You know what? I bombed with this the first time. Yeah, I'm gonna. I've, I'm, I'm going. Got some, I'm gonna refine it and and yeah. nail it. I was his only win that day, like because he he top decked the the time uh, the time twister he needed yeah. to, to beat me. Oh yeah, like Mason. See, the Mason is a powerful reactionary drafter. Ooh. He's very good at reading the table. Now that's a really early death right. That's from early. Back. What about the null rod though? That's early too. I mean, that's. Uh, but I think you know. No like, one else. If she's in red, white, black humans, no one else has taken that stuff though, and that's a great catch there, sure. Peter. I mean, that's that's early, but you know, the same as the Caracas. But again, if she's going all legendary, yeah, let's grab it. You know, if you're, if these are the cards that you want, I've been in that position where I thought I could float something for another 10, 15 rounds, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then somebody comes in and disrupts it, and my all this time I spent planning Ooh, this deck is yeah. out the window. Oh, Jason says, "Whoa, oh, okay, Jason. You know what? I think that you're uh, right, uh, Repsar. It is. It's uh, on like Donkey it's, Kong. It's it's yeah. in the Ponza. I didn't think it was going to happen, uh, especially with that Mox Pearl because it Mox Emerald was available. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it looks like we're in uh, a Jund kind of an uh, Abzani Jund kind of list. Yep, I think if Darian doesn't take Fast Bond here, Jason has to snake it." On the way back. Oh, I don't even... Snake is the wrong word. Right. Yeah. A very high pick for Jason now on the way back. Um, so, Wandering, I think that the Pearl he had... Uh, Pearl Thought sees he had an initial thought, and then he saw that someone else was heavily into yeah. a very similar deck, and he said, okay, I'm doing this other thing, and I'll either either side the Thought sees in or use the thought mm -hmm. use the Pearl's value. And there's our Oko. Yeah. A, a, um, Matt. And right there, so Max. Max is a former L2, a long-time L2. Yeah. He's been... Oh. He was an L2 when I was an L2. Fast bond yeah. on the board. And Oko as well. Yeah, so Max was an L2 when I came out oh. back in like 2011. Uh, but he's a he's a, a heavy vintage player. Just, just real quick, can I, can we just comment on the fact that it is uh, five rounds of drafting. Yeah. And we already have two four-color decks on the table and three three-color decks. Man, we don't necessarily have two four-color on the table. I mean, that pearl <laughs> yeah. could just well, be... Right. Listen, I mean, I'm just saying that... Through five picks, four colors right. are being represented. Four colors are established, yeah. Right. Uh, but Max is like a, Max is a hardcore vintage player. He owns powered shops, you know, fully powered yeah. real shops. Um, you know, I've 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 known Max for you know over a decade, and uh, I was excited to get him out from Kansas City for this, just yeah. because it's the type of thing that oh. <laughs> Excavator goes. Nope, nope. I'm gonna take the Crucible. Yeah, Crucible. you know what? They split it up. Uh, they split it up nicely. It's very conscientious yeah. of them to uh, well uh, yeah. to run through that. Except for the Strip Mine, much better than the Wasteland. Wasteland a controversial yeah. pick. I mean, just because it can go late because it's not. Sometimes yeah. it's just yeah. not good. Uh, unless you're getting value out of it uh, through Ren and Six or mm -hmm. Crucible um, or even blowing up your own lands, uh, I've had to do that. <laughs> I've had to do that oh. myself uh, in the I, previous yeah. VRD. I saw Cody doing it the other day, wait, uh, strip mining in his own land to replay the Taiga with, with, from the yard with Fast Bond, yeah. take a tap for green. It was, it was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to step out and leave you two on commentary for a few just so we're not having three voices, so we're getting everybody's voice in. So I'm going to step out and okay. we're going to switch our switching around. So okay. You two roll it. Uh, and uh, if somebody is like you know off the wheel or whatever, they're mm. 14 picks away, mm. go ahead and send them in. We'll just, get a, we'll just do a little quick hit. Okay. I'm curious to see where Mason's gonna go. the The last in person draft was that the mono blue Tings draft. Uh, I believe he went blue white, but I'm uh, I don't quite recall. Uh, that <laughs> I know that he beat me. So yeah, I will say okay. that. Um, but yes, it was heavily blue, and the originally uh, in his first two drafts. Uh, and on some of the Discord drafts, what Mason would do is uh, draft a Mox in the middle uh, of the first round and then go into Thoughtseize Inquisition. And that yes. strategy has almost entirely been subverted 
uh, recently where he now does the exact same thing except with force of will and force of negation. Mm -hmm. This time, however, he was able to pick them up in round three and round five. Um, Mason has won two of these, two out of the three that he's uh, he's played in. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I picked up the other one, so whatever. But uh, he is he's a very very skilled player. He's mm -hmm. a, a, comp Definitely. a competent drafter, but he has no issue just letting the rest of the drafters try to like suss out where they're going and just get maximum value off of the draft board during that yep. during that period of time. Um, as always, I think he is the one to watch, uh, you know, odds on favorite to win. Um, we'll see if we'll see if that holds out because we've got some fun, spicy stuff and it looks like the draft uh, is kind of, I don't want to say being blown up, but uh, the meta and the, uh, the average round of picking several of these cards is is being disrupted pretty heavily. Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, I feel like that happened in the last in-person draft as well. We saw a handful of cards go a lot or earlier than we expected, but it's because we saw some strategies forced that we hadn't previously. So the Thassa's Oracle pick last in-person VRD was very high. Right. Yeah, uh, Jeff, because Jeff forced that deck and played it incredibly well, and it was incredibly honed because Jeff was able to focus on that. And we also saw a change in position for a lot of the birthing pod pieces because we had that uh, two-part combo deck with Alurin and Pod, I believe. They yeah. were in the same deck. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that uh, the 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 pieces were in place there. It did not quite perform. Uh, I mean. The, the previous draft was very, very difficult. I think there were five or six people had uh, four and three or better records. Um, it was uh, it was very crowded at the top. You know, we had yes. one, one oh seven and one one and six. Uh, and it was really, really tough to push through um, yeah. in that previous draft. Uh, but going back to the board, we've got Dan here who didn't, he did not take Echo Vions, but probably made an even better call with a uh, wheel of fortune, taking that away from the red drafters, but taking the mm -hmm. lion's eye diamond, which uh, if you don't have lion's eye diamond, echo of eons is not going to come off the board. So uh, we've got uh, Heidi here who is going, with uh, Luris. going with Luris continuing down that path. Um, we'll see if uh, Heidi is able to like really extract some value out of Luris. Uh, you know, Black Lotus is off I, the board, uh, but there's plenty of other stuff that have really juicy interactions with Luris. Yeah, even if it's just value, uh, Heidi stressed trying to go legendary humans, but that by nature of being that narrow, does not include Stoneforge Mystic. And now that we know Jason is off that plan, I wonder if Heidi slots in Stoneforge Mystic into the list, which can extract a little bit of value when people interact with your equipment. Yeah. I um, I genuinely think uh, that Stoneforge Mystic should be drafted in the roughly round five area. Mm -hmm. Um. Being just being able to very reliably and easily get, uh, you know, threaten a uh, a cauldra complete on turn three, turn two, yep. turn three. Uh, it's it, it's just saying like here's a clock. It's really hard to deal with. Um, yeah, and it gives you time to set up things, and it just it just costs you that one card. Uh, it's it's so reliable. It's, it's very very effective. Absolutely. Usually we see competition for that card between whomever is drafting the white aggressive deck or the white equipment deck in seats one through seven in the eighth seat, because traditionally eighth seat seemed to lean towards artifact combo in which Stoneforge Mystic does actually put in some work. Yeah. Instead, we're seeing competition between seat six and seat eight over the lands deck where Jason just yeah. took Dark Depths. It's lovely. I mean, you know, this is, we're, we're going into, uh, you know, a Jundi, a Jundi land 
mm-hmm. kind of thing. And so I think we're probably going to see what he was talking about with a, with a Gitrog monster. I doubt that he'll... I, well, you know, who knows? He might end up going into the uh, <laughs> the spirit monger <laughs> area of things, but it, that's a it's a very silly thing. Uh, I it's not that I don't believe in that deck. I just think that deck can take so long to establish itself on board that you're going to get blown out by anybody who wants to go under you. But we also kind of are missing that red aggressive deck right now, so that plan can stand tall. So I think the best card that is oh never mind uh, mike took it in round four i ragavan is not on the board Ragavan, yeah. uh i was gonna say though if if jason didn't take thespian stage if mike would extract some vengeance for what was done to him <laughs> in, in in saint lotus five yeah. but uh uh jason is leaving nothing to chance particularly with this uh you know controversial combo before yeah um so what I want to put up to you is at, during which round do you think Jason will draft crop rotation? Where, where does that card belong? So with dark depths and stage off the board currently in Jason's draft, I don't think he expects it to go early. I think he's just going to let it float in all honesty. And my question about Jason's plan is, What kind of game is he going to try and play? If he wants to play a slower plotting game, I almost feel like he'd kind of want to draw into the combo naturally and just let it happen rather than try and force an early win, especially with no other utility lands besides depth and stage. Wasteland is great. It's not strip mine as noted, but he also doesn't have Basaju. If Jason picks up... Yeah, not yet. And th- that's certainly a, a card that has been uh, kind of, you know, trending upwards in terms of uh, the average round it's picked. Yep. But Seiju could be going before round 15 for sure, and Jason looks like the one to snag it. Yeah. Uh, I would think he would. Jason would take Basaju before crop rotation to ensure a little more protection because... I think that I makes think sense. That, I think that's the last piece he really wants before he starts taking his ancillary pieces. Yeah. So crop rotation probably will follow suit very shortly thereafter, but that's my answer is Besaju before crop rotation. Yeah, makes um, sense. Uh, we have Jeff uh, filling out his uh, mana base. Uh, mm-hmm. get, a, get a little Tundra for Teferi. Uh, he- Heidi now going with uh, Thalia nice. and, you know, making Jason feel like he made the right call, uh, audibling oh, out of uh, the black-white value. I'm s- I'm still trying to figure out what Mike is doing. Up to the Narset pick, Mike was on mono one drops, and it was very difficult to figure out what's going on. Um, You know, I was thinking something. I I could I I can't really tell you. It seems like a legacy deck. Yeah, a a, a vintage legacy hybrid. Yeah, we're at Grixis dot deck right now. Yeah. With okay. two lands Inter- to make. Note. Interesting. So now ah. Dan has now gone into the his third uh, twister piece. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, personally, uh, at that point, I don't think that you need, especially with a time spiral costing six and nobody else really getting value out of it. Um, no, no, I think time spiral. Uh, yeah. Now M- Mike's not going to take it because, well, I mean, Mike might take it, but. Uh, with that Narset, that's a that's a that's a heavily taxed uh, mana base there uh, mm-hmm. already. So, all right, I'm gonna give an interesting note, and then I'm gonna pop back out and scout more, and then I'll come back in and we'll tag out around pack 14 or 15. Okay. Um, so, the cards that are probably uh, most notably not seen right now, as noted by the people pulling our cards, I'm not worried about. It. I'm stopping just for one second. Are um, Mana Crypt, uh, or not Mana, Mana Fold, yeah. Vault, Grim Monolith, and Mana Drain. So Mana Drain is the most surprising to me. However, Mana yeah. Vault and both Mana Vault and Grim Monolith have been steadily falling over the last 10 or so drafts. Uh, I, I think the last draft I saw 
uh, was the first time Mana Vault had been taken in the first three rounds. Yeah, I took Grim Monolith in the third, and someone took Mana Vault right after me. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's because they... They don't untap. You 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 can't get the same value out they of them. They do it this place for Kitty, <laughs> over and over and over sure, again. Sure, but yeah. they don't they don't do it by themselves. Right, right. Absolutely. And yeah. I think uh, a lot of people, um, notably Kyle Vance in the previous uh, VRD uh, or VRD seven, um, drafted Grim Monolith very highly and just kind of watched it sit there for a while. Um, but it also gives you access. I mean, the thing is, is if it doesn't get removed. It gives you access to like turn two to fairy hit your dominaria. You know? uh, agreed. They're, they're they're very good cards. I, I you all have no argument from me. Right. But in terms of like, would you rather have like a ragavan? Right. Um. You know what are your hyphenated? Welcome. Uh, what are your turn one, your turn two plays, um, and how does that translate to maintaining board? Dominance, uh, you know, into the mid game, and with Mana Vault and uh, Grim Monolith, they can absolutely enable those things. But it takes a card to do it, right. and uh, if you run into a counter spell or or whatever, I mean, there, or, yeah, there was a lot of games in this most recent one where I had the turn, I had the turn one or two Grim Monolith to go for the big turn three, and then it just got removed. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I was going to bring those in as a thing. So Mana Drain is our current what the hell. Um, mm-hmm. Right, and I'm gonna fade back out for a little bit and let these two rock and roll, and I will rejoin y'all about pick 14. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so we saw Jason take Reclaimer, which is basically another crop rotation. Darian pick up the crop rotation, and Jason take Knight of the Reliquary on the route back. So he, Jason is definitely solidifying himself as an aggressive version of the lands deck. Yeah. Um, Not a combo version. I, I. I think that it hurts. Jason, uh, pretty badly to not have that crop rotation. Frankly, um, I, I think, obviously, Elvish Reclaimer works ex- extremely well in this deck, and he wants that card. But uh, instant speed crop rotation uh, to just be able to put that twenty twenty on the board when your opponent thinks that you have another turn, it's it's going to be hard without that yes uh, I, I agree i think of the the options jason had in front of him taking reclaimer over crop rotation was the worst option but at the same time jason also has other methods of counter removal in front of him for the 2020 they're not great because they are on board presence and things like vampire hex mage or hex parasite yeah but they are they are there um I was actually kind of curious uh, about when Opposition Agent would go. And so, Mike, taking Oppo Agent kind of makes it look like this Grixis deck might be a controlling kind of build. So I'm curious to see where this goes. So um, if somebody out there in the chat would be uh, interested in uh, linking the Discord if it's not already up on uh, the Twitch... um, There is a Discord for uh, the BRD... Um, we've got a lot of really, really good players there. You can sign up for on-demand drafts. Uh, we do them asynchronously. And it's very interesting to see the difference in strategy between people who regularly participate in those drafts and uh, the people whose, you know, kind of exclusive, uh, I don't know, viewing habits come from watching something is funny. <laughs> I guess the early, early muddle, muddle mixture. Uh, but, uh, okay, and Mason did pick up that mana drain. He, right, he, we have a he's, quote. he's, we have a table quote. Table quote is from Jeff Blyden. Oh shit, I got so caught up in that side discussion, I forgot I was supposed to take Thassa's Oracle that pick. Which Mike Viviano responds with, get fucked, Jeff. <laughs> 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 Apparently, Jeff got fucked. I, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. you hate to say it or you love it. I, <laughs> you know, to, I, Jeff is a very entertaining uh, oh. drafter yeah. to watch and a very frustrating one to play against. Uh, we've got uh, Heidi with, uh, you know, filling out mana base and then going Aether Vial into Mother of Runes. Yep. Very, very solid picks. We got, you know, some death and taxes looking uh, shenanigans going on. Um, yeah. Mason just still snagging up the, the, the blue stragglers. 
as it's just uh, value all the way down for yeah, Mason. Yeah, then that's it's gonna be like that. And so I think yeah. that a lot of the matches you see from him are just him outvaluing his opponents, where every card is just really, really efficient, and uh, he's not. I don't think he's gonna break a sweat. Uh, no, not at very, all. very often at all. Um, I, but uh, g- yeah, go ahead. I, so, I, I thought Ledger Shredder would have been picked up earlier in Mason's draft. I didn't think Lutri or Brazen Borrower would be that important to the strategy, but mm. yeah, with nobody else in the blue tempo deck, essentially, yeah, he, Ledger Shredder can just be floated. What Mason is doing is essentially just demoralizing everybody else because. Blue is wider open than it has been in a uh, in many drafts uh, mm-hmm. from from my perspective, and Mason is just saying like yeah, eventually some people are going to kind of slide into blue. Uh, you know, Max has an Oko, and mm-hmm. he's going to have to uh, support that somehow, and it makes sense. Uh, so until that happens, I am just going to eat the prime cut. Yes. And uh, he's going to get... Oh, and then we see Jason taking Mason's Mana Confluence, which uh, Mason voted for as his uh, most un- underdrafted in terms of the average round that it's picked. Uh, yep. Especially when you consider how highly drafted the fetch lands are. Mm-hmm. Um, Mason is firmly of the opinion that, that fetch lands are like disgustingly overdrafted. I think uh, I think that they are slightly overdrafted. Uh, starting, let's see, we had our first one in what? Yeah, Mike with round the Pluto Delta in round two. That yeah. is that that is way too early. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, but you know, round I, round six is kind of theoretically when you should start seeing fetches. I, I agree wholeheartedly. But with the caveat that both Mike and Jason have plans for those sets of land picks. So we have Mike with the Delta and the Tarn in back to back, but then DRS two picks later. And I think Mike knew that DR going that whatever plan Mike has. Right. DRS fits in. Nobody's going to take it. I'll eat my veggies and take the fetches to ensure they're available in a graveyard for me. So my DRS isn't dead. Yeah. Jason taking Mana Confluence, I also I think spicks, uh, smacks of the fact that he believes nobody's going to take Urbork or Yavimaya, so that Mana yeah. Confluence is not always going to pain him, and it will always tap for a mana of a color that he needs. Yeah, <laughs> it was the yeah. brass. Yeah, uh, I mean, with a rock deck, that's a that's one of the beauties of it, where two out of your forty cards can just have all of your lands give you those, uh, uh, you know, give you those supporting colors. Yeah. With uh, Mana Confluence and uh, City of Brass, it's going to let him, you know, get into, you know, to maybe utilize that pearl. I doubt we'll see much of that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, reliably be able to cast that Ren in six. Uh, but, yeah. you know, he's going to have card. He has cards like Wasteland. He has Dark Depths and Thespian Stage. He needs to turn those in to mana producing lands. Yavi Maya. Uh, or, uh, or, go ahead. I believe Wandering Winder is right because it's a trigger for City of Brass when it becomes tapped. Yes, and correct. that is yeah. It w- yeah, City yeah. Brass will hurt you. Yeah. Um, minor but, like knockoff AKs. What it chronicles. Yeah. So. so I you know I I doubt we'll see much more uh, value lands from Jason uh, beyond this because you're mm-hmm. supporting a lot of colors. Yep. And, uh, you know, you've got a lot of low drops. Uh, yep. So you can, in the longer game, turn those into uh, productive mana lands. But, uh, you know, you're talking about another land drop to get down to Yavimaya or whatever. And then Dryad of the Elysian Grove, incredible, uh, and should be something that Jason picks up. But yep. it's a three drop. So right. being able to reliably cast those cards and get out of a, of a mana hole is going to be hard. Mm-hmm. So I doubt we, and with, especially without a crop rotation, uh, I doubt we're going to see stuff like a maze of Ith or a, uh, you know, other, yep. Other value lands like that. But, I uh, think Jason ahead. would leave the, the mazes to Darian. Um, yeah, I, I do want to take a step back for a moment, talk about Jeff's pick and the rules here for VRD. Okay. So Jeff takes Arkham's astrolabe. 
which requires one snow mana to cast, correct? Correct. Now, hey, Jaster Rogue, thank you for the subscription. Yeah. Jaster Rogue, one yeah. of our uh, one of our discard or Discord uh, uh, regulars. Now, Snowlands Snow Basics are not available for free after the draft, like regular basics. You have to make a pick for a Snow Basic. I believe that we've had, I think, three different sets of rules regarding uh, how many you have to draft and uh, what you're allowed to have. So, yes, Jeff will have to, I believe, draft, let's say, a Snow Island uh, mm -hmm. snow planes, planes but i believe at that point he gets access to as many of those as he wants it used to be just four, four i thought yeah. i always thought that was pretty silly that it was limited to four but uh, uh i believe that has been rectified yes so i just wanted to make sure so there there's an interesting rule set around the snow basics and then we also have interesting rules around i say interesting but it really is just kind of an expansion is it Relentless Rats, Shadowborn Apostle, Persistent Petitioners? The, I, the believe, I believe the rule is that you are allowed 20 of those cards. Uh, and that is exclusively... The, the reason it's <laughs> capped at 20 is exclusively to save Mark on printer costs. Because we have to, <laughs> we have to proxy all of those up. Yep. And, uh, you know, having somebody be like, uh, well, I want 37 of them. It's like, mm -hmm. we have to cut those... <laughs> We have to print them out. Uh, oh yeah, Mark is already very generous with his uh, his space, his time, and you know pizza already. And you're gonna you're gonna deplete his ink cartridges? No, come on, man. You get twenty. That's very generous. Yeah. So Mark in the chat saying it also saves mail as a deck, which I I can understand, but I like believing yeah. this is a resource utilization cost. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, bring <laughs> us back. We missed. Uh, Dreadhorde Arcanist from Mike. Yeah. Uh, Dreadhorde, a card that Mike has previously drafted in his Red Green Lands deck. Um, he likes it, Dreadhorde Arcanist and Lightning Bolt a lot. Uh, you know, at this point, I think Heidi might not be going into Mardu and might just be sticking in the white black region. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, you might have seen that lightning bolt get snagged. It's also, you know, kind of daunting for somebody who, you know, Heidi came in and. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll finish up this kind of point. You know, saying, you know, hey, yeah, I'm I'm more on the casual side of things. Heidi coming from our St. Louis presents uh, mm -hmm. group of players, um, and creating a mana base for three colors is hard. Uh, it, it's very difficult, especially with fetches going so high. Uh, and if you just want to focus on getting the cards that you want, you can absolutely support uh, a two-color deck without too much trouble and uh, too much forethought. So it seems like she probably made the decision to dump that. Mike getting mm -hmm. Lightning Bolt, uh, taking that kind of removal that she would want, is probably a good signal that she's going to stick to uh, Orza. So I'm going to tap out. Steven? Right. Yep. All right. Yep. So uh, Jeff picks up the pretty late Karn, the great creator there, which is one of my top two, like, oh. hey, this card. Karn's one that's interesting. So I wrote that article in Walkers, and let me, I want to hear your thoughts on this, Peter. Um, Absolutely. And at that point, Walkers were, were really showing, the, oh, nice, grabbed a bridge quick there, huh? Nice. Uh, walkers were really kind of a top dog because there was a lot of, not a lot of aggressive decks in the format. Um, walkers have kind of, at least in the discords, have dropped in value a little bit as decks have gotten more aggressive. And Karn in particular, who was my number one walker, um, has been underperforming in my mind. Like there, there are times where, yeah, you're just locking people out with it. Uh, so what do you, what's your thought on, on Karn? Where does it rank in the walker hierarchy right now? I love Karn if there's enough. No, base. IOK is gone, uh, Eric. IOK went to yeah. Heidi in six. I love Karn if the base saturation of artifacts across the format is high, okay. especially as an early pick, because that just tells everybody, like, I'm coming and swinging, and you now have to build your decks accordingly. Uh, a late Karn, like we see here, is also a great bamboozle. Yeah. I, I don't think there's a... There's probably a wrong time for Karn in the draft, Uh usually picked in round five. I think that's a great place for it. I think if you go any earlier than that, you've got to be dedicated to Karn, but I think this is one of the best walkers in the format. And 
I'm kind of surprised that of the list that Jason gave us privy to, Karn, I don't think was in any of them to kind of lock the game down. There's right. no stasis, no static orb, no deck to turn this VRD into mud. Right. So, um, you know, I'm right now looking at these. Um, you know, Viviano is a very talented player. Uh, Viviano is a, a great limited player in particular. Uh, he's kind of a local grinder all-star. Uh, but, you know, like the Deathrite Shaman that early is... Deathrite Shaman is one of those cards that's really iffy in this format. Oh, so, okay, Jeff Jeff picks up a card that if you follow our um, Mark and I shows that I'm very high on and Mark is very down on. That card in that deck right there is particularly good. Um, I mentioned earlier when we were discussing Monolith and Vault that it becomes... Uh, even better, right? Uh, because it, it allows... So in a recent VRD... Let me pull up Displacer Kitten for those that don't know. Uh, yeah. This card in particular combos with his early um, Teferi. Dark Rift? Well, oh, he didn't Dark Rift. Well, so with Teferi, you can... Um, with just a Mox... With a any kind of mana positive rock, right? So a uh, even the Sapphire. You bounce the Sapphire to your hand. You play the Sapphire bouncing... To, drawing a card. You play the Sapphire bouncing Teferi... Um, mm -hmm. and then you keep doing that and you basically get to draw your deck yes. um, and make mana equal to the number of cards you drew and they can't interact with it because Teferi's out the whole time yeah one of the neat parts about this is um, so I, I come at the game from a constructive standpoint so Displacer Kitten is spoiled and people are going nuts for it for Legacy mm -hmm. because it's very obvious there where it's just like lands in Dark Rit until the day you die you can loop Dark Rit and uh, if you can with an internal witness. You can loop Dark Rit and Demonic Tutor and draw your whole, and tutor your yeah. whole deck. And Commander, yeah, you just draw your entire deck. Yeah. Um, people are coming at it like it was the next Kappa Cannoneer, and it burned really bright, and then it kind of faded away. And the more I read this card, the more I think about like this is just a better World Forger combo. Yeah, because you've got this loop that you can do that is mana positive, requires very little, uh, requires very few pieces to get going. That's the issue with it is actually requires more pieces, right? Is that it require it always requ almost always requires at least three pieces, mm -hmm. um, sometimes four. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah. that is the one downfall. Uh, but it is what I ran it recently as was just a value play. Even like I was other than one other than Deferi, I wasn't comboing off much. But I had turns where I um, blinked. I had Karn with pants. I made a a a, a Karn an Urzatron right. And then yep. I blinked Karn with pants, made another one, and then blinked Karn with pants again. So I had three Urza uh, constructs in one yeah. turn, right? Or I tapped my Grim Monolith, cast a spell, blinked it, tapped it, and a land, cast Calder Complete, blinking it, tapped it, capped two more lands, cast Batter Skull in the same turn. Like turn four, yeah. Calder Complete, and Batter Skull. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that's the power of Displacer Kitten over the Dragon Combo. Like the Dragon Combo still takes three pieces to get going. But aside from the dragon and your finisher, the only utility piece is the animate dead or the necromancy. Right. Well, right. there's a better yeah. dragon combo now. the The white card from um, yeah, the white card from Baldur's Gate is better dragon because it has a built-in win in that it makes one ones. Yes. All right. So Dan loves Wish. Uh, he he's ran this card before to great effect. Uh, the the open Wish is the absolutely open. You know, it's three mana instead of two. But it is the pure, absolutely open go for your sideboard. I I honestly forgot that Wish was a card, and I thought, which Wish? Yeah. Burning Wish, Cunning Wish. Dan has drafted one of these, so it says pick twice in two of 18 drafts, uh, usually around 33. Dan is one of those two, for sure. I don't know who the other one was. Uh, what is Dan going to put in the sideboard? Okay, actually, he's gonna the put, witches in VRD are bound to your sideboard like yeah. a standard game of yes, Magic, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Which is why Karn's powerful, because Karn lets you basically pre-draft a board and then have the extra card, right? So yeah. Jeff lost the bridge to you know for Karn. Uh, Mason, so Mason's probably is definitely the most experienced drafter out here just because he does a lot of the online as well, and him and the Chicago crew have done a ton. Mm -hmm. um, so he he sees the value, he knows the value. Sheldock Isle... Has been going as high as six or seven in some of the discords. Um, Mason's basically replaying his lap mono blue from the last time. Now he's got that breeding pool. Someone mentioned it. Yep. Um, 
Mark better. Yeah, it's better. It's it's straight better world gorger. Uh, it doesn't yeah. make infinite mana, but it has a built-in win con, and you don't need an extra piece of junk to win with it. Yeah, it's it's much better for limited formats like this. I am not a proponent of having to win the next turn right. in combat um, when it comes to constructed formats. So there's definitely a difference there. Heidi got a lot of hate cards going here. Leyline of the Void, Disenchant. But again, yeah. she, that's good because she's not. I mean, that's smart. Like Heidi got invited to this, so she, as she said earlier, and Brandon mentioned, she's you know admitted she's more casual. Heidi got invited to this because when I watch and and commentate the uh, Discord or VR Saint Lotus presents, she was the one that brought like scheming Finch to our attention, and you know like oh, you could okay. see that she just had like some interesting thoughts and insights, and there were some picks that I questioned, but at the end I was like, you know, there's a lot like a lot of really good thoughts there, so I wanted you know I said, hey, let's oh. bring Hi- let's invite Heidi over to this. <laughs> All right, Jason is being spiteful. Uh, well, you know, but I mean, there's so many things with the helm. I mean, you don't have to like. I don't. I don't know if she I, was going for the helm there. Actually, I think she may just be leylining in response to um, what she's seeing. What she's seen, right? I mean, that's yeah. the thing. Is like, you're not always going for the combo. No. Um, I would expect rest in peace as well, just to double up on it. And yeah, I mean, there's re- there's there's rest in peace. There's so many things that can go with the helm that. Yeah. Jason will probably take the black enchantment that I can't think of off the top of my head. Not, not coercion. Or there's also Dothy Voidwalker, which has not been yeah. drafted yet. Um, which also plays into a rock style game right. that Jason might be headed towards. Now, I will I, say with Mike, um, with Viviano, like the opposition agent is really early there. Like I was, the first time an opposition agent drafted it was by me, and it, I drafted it like way too high, like four or five. Really? Opposition agent is amazing in decks that are heavy on the counter spells because mm-hmm. you want to hold up mana. In a sorcery speed deck, like. Look like more like Viviano's. It looks like it's playing a little more sorcery speed. Yes. Um, it ends up blanking so much, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because it's just like, okay, when do I do it? When do I do it? Yeah, a lot of what Mike is picking now after the switch from uh, one drops dot deck just seems to be a ton of value pieces. Like we're going to ensure that everything we play can be played for value. Thanks to Dreadhorde Arcanist, it's super efficient. And even if we have to play a sorcery speed, we're only paying one mana, two mana for things. Ragavan giving the early, if Ragavan can land early, like uh, DRS can give us a boost in mana to make sure we can play our Narset and still hold up an instant or two. All right, let's take a vote. I want to vote from, um, before Peter and I say anything, I want, I want to hear what Chad has to say. Where's Max going to end up going right now? Looking at Max's deck, what's he going to do? I've got an idea, and we'll see. But Doomsday, yeah, that's uh, we could see. That's that plays into my idea. Mm-hmm. You're not Stephen Brandon. I'm both. I am Stephen Brandon Hagen. Scooch. I am Doctor Stephen Brandon Hagen, PhD. Scooch your pooch. Scooch my pooch. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. We got some news from the outer world. We have news from the outer world. So uh, oh. we have Jason Thurston in here, and uh, he is going to be doing a little interview with us. All right. Um, All right. But yeah, you, he has said, and he'll touch on this, doesn't really care about crop rotation. I thought it was, was going to be a bigger deal. Um, there was a mighty hubbub about Displacer Kitten uh, and Tormod's Crypt getting hate-picked by, uh, by Dan. So um, decks are shaping sure. up. We're about to hit the break uh, after the next three picks, and hold on, Crypt was a hate pick because I heard them roar. I heard the crowd yeah, roar so when Tormod's Crypt was picked. That Crypt was a hate play, pick. Crypt plays really well with Kitten just because it's free, um, but and if you do something like um, Trinket Mage, it, it allows yeah. for some pretty sick lines where you can basically get out every mana rock in your deck, etc. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, again, it's such a value pick that. It might be hate-ish, but I don't feel like it's over. Infinite that, combo with that's exactly how I felt about that pick. I just thought it was, again, an eat-your-vegetables kind of pick okay. based on what we're and seeing on board. Right. Kitten, and then, okay. yeah. yeah, and actually, uh, Crypt does part of the Karn. The sense, Karn stuff. Because yeah. you can car- Tormod's Crypt your own graveyard mm-hmm. um, and then get it back with Karn. So they're, and then blinking Karn to do it over and over again. So there is an extra level of hate pick there. So Okay. Yeah, it just... it. 
for the the deck that Dan is drafting, Tormod's Crypt and Reliquary Tower make the most sense over Unlicensed Tars or something a little more interactive endurance like Jason has for Graveyard Hate. And it seems right. like we're spreading Graveyard Hate across the field. Yeah, yeah. M- Mark's always praying for Doomsday. All right, yep. so let's see the three more picks here, and then we're going to have our stop, and we're going to interview Thirsty. Uh, so we've got our first Triome here, probably a little early on the Triome, but again, her mana base is going to be pulling in a lot of directions, so let's go ahead and, and get what we need there. Leyland yeah. and Snag, yeah. So um, going into the first break, how do we feel about uh, each of our drafters' performance lists, uh, however you want to say it? Um, Mason's list is scary. I mean, yeah. you know, but we knew that was going to happen. Uh, mm-hmm. The only blue drafter. Yeah, I mean, he's the really only primary blue drafter. There's a few things. I, I think Max is going to end up in Storm, and I think as many people that have followed these before know, I think Storm is a mistake. Um, and But that's a, if you're coming in as a, as a vintage player and legacy player, you, you know, it's something you're going to try often and then find out that it was a mistake. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, uh, Katerberg says, Brandon's hat. See you. Oh, yes. No. He's the king of beers. I, it's king of beers. Yeah, uh, I, go ahead. I, I agree with, with everything that was said. I thought when we asked earlier where Max was going to go, I didn't think Doomsday. I just thought regular Storm because it doesn't seem like with only Lab Man available, Doomsday was the correct is the best call there. Um, the one thing I, I wanted to say earlier, and I'll note now, is there's not a lot of conversation to be had about Heidi's list because it's just so straightforward and good. Yeah, right. I think that's one thing we've overlooked is just how just good it's, and... It's very straightforward. It does it does this thing. I'll tell you, Kytheon was really good for me when I did Blue White Humans yeah. online. So, All right, let's go yeah. ahead and get, uh, get Jason in here for our first interview. We've had a request in our Discord discussions for more interviews. Yeah, so Wait, we're going to talk to Jason. What does his facial hair look like? Is it the handlebars? I mean, he's no. going to be right. Oh, because here we go. It's pretty uh, standard, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's I less mean, uh, it's it's less a uh, truck stop than yeah. it has been. Yeah, it's it's a standard. <laughs> we we didn't go truck stop. Uh, I I have some interviews this week. So All right, we can't we can't do it yet. So uh, we've got Jason here now, and then uh, please type in chat. Let us know uh, which of our other drafters uh, you'd like to see. Right. We're going to try to do two of these. Um, and I'm just a little bit to, shorter. I'm going to shrink chat out of our window, though, of course, though, so people don't accidentally mention cards or things. Yes, thank you. So, yeah. Oh. I'm just going to drag it over. Just drag it to the bottom. There yeah. we go. All right. Cool. All right. So uh, I came into this with three decks in mind. There was Black White Taxes, which had been really heavily drafted the last few VRDs, including yeah. Discord, so I thought that was going to be heavily fought over. Uh, I pivoted on pick three going for Ponza. At that point, it was clear that Darian and I were going to fight over a few key cards, so I went for, like, Crucible, the Depths combo, stuff like that. I'm not actually planning on being in lands after this. Uh, Basically, pack one, the way I approach it is let me get the cards that I'm going to be contested with other people and go from there. So I picked early, you know, Helm is just a good two-card combo. I'm probably going to be three colors, which is why I picked the Confluence in the City a little early because people undervalue those versus the duels that they can use, and I don't know why. Uh, you know, next land pick is probably going to be something like Reflecting Pool. But in round, like in pack two, um, basically going for stuff like Wildfire, Terravore, Clothis, uh, maybe some sideboard cards. I may pick a Kasali Pride Mage because I don't have much artifact removal, and Darien got the oof and the Force of Vigor. Um, the one deck I'm super concerned about is Mason's. Uh, because I can get blown out by that a lot, so I'm probably going to double up on, like, City of Solitude and Vexing Shusher, and then pick three, let's see, plan for tutors or draw for your two-card combos. That's often the downfall. So I'm going to be honest. I guess uh, I didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have the chat. I, I have uh, Sylvan Library as one of my only draws. Uh, I'm looking into Landfall or possibly, what's the Atlas? Uh, Endless Atlas. Would be one. I'm planning on getting Oracle at some point, maybe. With uh, uh, no, go ahead. I don't know if this is too much. I mean, you uh, you are still in black, correct? No, or, I know, dropped black entirely. Uh, so we are we are green red with a white splash at this point. So okay. I have Reliquary to tutor for my land combos as well as Elvish Reclaimer. Yeah. And basically, I'm probably going to be on the Dark Depths Thespian stage. I may splash Helm and rest. We'll see what I end up with. Uh, but basically, the plan is beyond like 
red green Ponza splash white for Knight of the Reliquary and some good sideboard options. Uh, Tomic I think is very good here against Darien. Uh, Price of Glory is going to be really good against Mason. There's a lot of options for stuff that I'm basically considering. Yeah. Um, but I just wanted to get the bought four stuff out of the way, and then packs two and three are just going to be like probably stuff that's never been printed before. Okay. So. Uh. So with uh your Crucible, is mm-hmm. there any other ways that you're planning to get value out of that? I mean, it's going to be obviously difficult with Darian. Uh, having already taken uh, fast bond and everything like that. Well, the nice thing about Crucible is it doesn't die to Destructive Force, Wildfire, or Burning of Shinyi. Oh, that's true. All of which I'm planning on running. Ramanop Excavator does. Uh, yeah. So I may pick an early loam here and try to go for, you know, the Ren Alt or something like that. Seismic Assault is something I could easily pick and run. Uh, yeah. And running loam with that is good. It also helps recover after Wildfire or Burning or something like that. Are um, are you the deck to pick balance this time? Oh god, I might be. Although I'm already running so many things that blow up creatures and lands that I'm not sure how good it is, but man, when I get hellbent, I am screwed. So <laughs> that uh that may be a thing too, and I may look into like I don't know, some form of land draw. Obviously I can't go desolate lighthouse at this point. Yeah. Um but you know, there's options there and stuff that I can look at. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Well, let's not what name about, more, let's not name more cards here. Let's yeah. talk broader strategy. Yeah. So let's not name. Yeah, more sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bal- sorry. Balance, sorry. balance is not not for me. It is not on my radar for either deck. Actually, uh, I personally think balance is good in one deck in this format, uh, and that deck has not been picked today. Yeah. Uh, so I I think it's you know similar to we had what time vault went when third round. Yeah. yeah. That's. That's pretty standard. Sure, it's yeah. It's, it's been getting later and later. I think that balance is a similar card where it's like many of the drafts where it's been picked, it probably shouldn't have been at all because it just didn't do anything across any of the games that somebody played. So Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, what, so my question I always have for these, of course, is what is a pick that you someone else grabbed that you uh, wanted? Boseju. Boseju, okay. I think Boseju is the best removal in the format. Okay. Uh, period. Yeah. All right. Thank uh, well, thank you very much. And uh, chat, who will we have Jason send in for us? And this is on a delay, so this is a right. terrible time to hold. Yeah. Have you hold up? Yeah. But we'll 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 ask for somebody, and Mark will send them in. Um, you're good. Uh, so, um, interesting thoughts from Jason. I I was not expecting uh, this to be a Naya build. This was uh, it was one of the last kind of things. Uh, on my radar, but uh, I mean, it was, it was makes four sense. Color, so I mean, you know, sometimes yeah, you and, pick and you kick out. Um, I did expect Jason to go a value route, uh, uh, you know, abusing symmetry, and then have one combo. And in my head, I I did think it was going to be Helm. Okay, uh, well, that seems like a very Jason. I, thing. I like uh, I like the point here. Uh, All right, so we've got one for Darian and one for Mike. Who next vote next vote wins it? So I'm gonna go fetch somebody. Yeah, make it One of fast. the things I'm interesting to see from Jason is that when he was discussing his game plan, especially around Crucible, he mentioned some six mana value cards, yeah, and I'm curious mm-hmm. with his concern for Mason if he thinks Rurik Thar the Unbowed is an option for that matchup or for Dan. Interesting. Um, I am going to pull up. Uh, Rurik Thar. Rurik Thar, the Unbowed? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. There are two... Oh, yeah, there's two Bora Burigmas. It's Rurik Thar specifically. Yeah. Rurik Thar is the one that Darian's domes a player for six when they play a non-creature spell. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm going to let you two talk to Darian so we don't have... Uh... Yeah, sounds good. Okay. You two talk to Darian, then I'll come jump back in. We can get back to Rurik Thar after... Uh... <laughs> of course, I mean, you know what? It's there. Everybody's got a chance to to read it over and catch up with it. Uh, okay. So, and if anybody has any questions here for Darian, then uh, we'll go ahead and drop them in chat. But you know, try to keep the individual card picks uh, to a minimum slash zero. Uh, here you go. So, how's the draft going? What's uh, what did you pivot in and out of, and where? things ending up so 
I mean, I didn't really have to do much pivoting. Uh, Jason kind of grabbed a couple of my key cards, so I just had to start picking cards that he might theoretically take. Um, I think mm-hmm. I'm still pretty solid. I'm in green, red uh, lands. No one's really doing green. No one's really doing red except Jason, but he's. I don't think he's going to do red, so we'll see. Um, yep. And if he does, I don't think we'll be on the same, you know, avenue. Yeah. So I think right now, starting now, I'm pretty open. I can start doing really what I want. Yeah, I mean, and it does seem like you ended up getting the good versions of the things that you wanted. Uh, you got Strip Mine, whereas you got Wasteland. Um, you've got, you know, your, your Ramanek Excavator. You got the Beseju. You got the Crop Rotation. Mm-hmm. You've got some... Uh, some of those very powerful pieces that are going to help you out. So what uh, what can we expect uh, potentially for uh, upcoming picks? I mean... And Metabubbles wants to know, what is your win condition? What's the win con? Uh, the win con's probably going to be Field of the Dead. Uh, I, oh, figured, okay. I figured Jason was not going to take it, so I decided just to push it off a little bit longer, mm-hmm. and no one else is really going to take it because, I mean, I'm in the struggle that all my 46 picks are probably going to be mostly main deck cards because I had to draft a bunch of lands that are not mm-hmm. basics. Um, but I think it's going to be like Field of the Dead. I'm going to put a prime time in there probably. Mm-hmm. Um, Ooh. Just, you know, ramp into super big dudes, maybe an Elder Garter off later. Uh, really see how it shakes. I've got Green Sun in it, so I kind of got a lot of options. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited for the second round uh, Urza Saga because now i got a bunch of Silver Bullet options that I could throw, you know, around. Yeah. So I'm excited. Very cool. Uh, looking around at the table... <laughs> loud uh looking around at the table what are what do you feel are some good matchups for you and what are you concerned about um if jason goes into red he's going to the red for ponza and that's going to be unwinnable for me uh other than that hyper combo is probably going to be where i struggle but hopefully the silver bullets will come out and i can maybe stop any combo they try and do Mm -hmm. Uh, other than that i feel pretty good cool most blue control decks i could probably play around like you know landswood yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, what What's your ideal hand? And we'll have that be our last question for you. What, uh, do you, what are you hoping to draw? Fast bond strip mine. You know, a green zone Ramanad effect, and then just mm-hmm. go crazy. I mean, that's my most aggressive hand I could ever do. Yeah, that's a, it, it. Is a good one. I have uh, I have drawn that hand on several occasions, yeah. and uh, it's not fun for the opponent. Uh, I would hate it, but uh, <laughs> I hope I, could, I, I hope we can do it at least once today. That, that's why that's why you're drafting it, so somebody else doesn't yeah. get to do it against you. Uh, thank you very much for the interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, best of luck out there, and may the cards fall to you. I hope so. All I right. Hope there's no crazy pivots in the green. That'd be scary. Uh oh. <laughs> right. I like the plan. All righty. So, uh, yeah, you know, you heard a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say contradictory, but uh, you, there was a little interplay there between Jason and Darian. Um, so they're they're hoping for certain things to not happen that seem like are likely to happen. Uh, yes, we are good to go. Get them started on uh, round 16. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't actually think that he was going to pick balance, so I didn't feel like that was... Uh, an unfair. Yeah, there's always an <laughs> right. Yeah. There's a, so. I think this is a great time for us to talk about uh, the cards the that have Derek. not Surpri- surprisingly not on the board yet, Derek. Uh, yeah. So there's a couple of cards that haven't been taken. Oh, and here's our monolith, our vault monolith bulls. Sure. And uh, you know Dan's Dan's deck is the one to play it. it it'll be interesting to Dan sniping stuff from Jeff here though. That's I mean that's there, there, there's some interesting cross play there. Jeff's Jeff, been lamenting the loss of the Toronto's well, crypt outside. J- Jeff and I uh, are very similar in the sense that we have very grand plans that even in our head cannot fit into a 40 card deck. And uh, yeah, it, so you end up spending the entire draft like being bummed out or stressed out that like this pan, plan got snagged from you. But it's really like 14 different plans that we're never all going to be able to fit in the same place anyways. Jeff is a very talented drafter and player, and something will absolutely come oh, together yeah, yeah, for yeah. him, uh, and he'll do well. You know, Jeff is—I yeah. don't think Jeff's ever gone worse than four and three. No, so. he has. He has. I think he had a three and four once. I'm pretty sure. Okay, um, but yeah, you know, he—he'll 
just me and you right now, or is Peter still here? Uh, yeah, Peter's still here. Okay. I be- well, maybe, maybe not. But, um, yeah, so in terms of cards that we have not seen come off the board, uh, number one for me is Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah. Uh, so, real quick before that, like, so uh, I didn't catch the reanimate at the end of uh, Mike's yeah. last round there. So that's, uh, that's interesting. So uh, I talked to Mike before the draft, and we didn't, we were running a little bit late because of audio issues. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't really get a chance to go through what everybody's planning on drafting. Obviously, at this point, Dan is um, doing Whole Breacher wheel shenanigans into a brain freeze kind of list, uh, and there's plenty of supporting combos within the context of that overall archetype um, and plenty of surprises we can see. Uh, Mike is, you know, snagging his second pick recall is doing a value reanimator list um, where he's not going to get blown out by a Tormod's crypt or an endurance or something like that because, you know, I like a value. I, I agree. I've actually been brewing aggro reanimator lists, yeah. like aggro lists with some a couple of big entomb reanimator backup targets yeah. that are that are pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, and it's it's good stuff, um, especially within those colors and like, oh okay, I'm gonna spend my resources to get rid of your ragavan because I can't deal with it right now. It's like, all right, well cool, I'm gonna play reanimate and uh, pay one life and get it back. So glad those resources are gone. Um, we've got Mason doing what we mentioned earlier, just <laughs> having just taking people to value town and snagging up uh, all the best stuff as uh, everybody else buys for their particular uh, so, archetype. Two things: like, one, Eric, yeah, I could definitely see Crocs that come in that list. Um, yeah. Two, that there is this really interesting thing where, when a lot of people try to get cute, a deck like Mason's can pop up, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Um, you, we say to ourselves when we see five blue decks at the table, like there's too many people drafting blue, and then when there's only four, we're like, there's not enough people yeah. drafting blue. There's no ideal number of people at the table. Um, it is a very rare occurrence when you see, uh, like, the blue cards being picked very, very appropriately and everything, because you only get one pick around, and that's sixteen people going around. There's sixteen picks going around from. Uh, round to round when you're back in the same position. So uh, that's why these drafts are always fresh and always new, and uh, there's always stuff that's going to surprise you. So uh, we come back around to Heidi, and going down Heidi's list, we got the Mox Jet, Swords of Plowshares, Esper Sentinel, Caracas. Um, these are all just really good value picks. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one in particular, the only one in particular that I would say is Stoneforge. is out of here. Well, Stoneforge would be super ideal for Heidi to pick up right now. Um, but, you know, Disenchant is one of those cards where there's been so many versions of it printed yeah. recently that you don't need to pick that right now. That's totally fine, though, but the rest of the list is looking very solid. Right. Um, and then going through with Jeff, we see... Uh, him following through on what he told us he was going to do, which oh, is... And we have our first, uh, hey, I'm going to try this. And Max said, no. I, I think it's happened a, uh, couple, a couple of times. But yeah. uh, but yes, it, it, we Lotus Petal is is almost always off the board, especially by round 16 or 17. Yeah. So... Um, it's always a sneaky one, though. Yeah. I've actually, out of the cards that I've taken where I'm like, oh, oops, it's Austin awesome Lotus Petal. <laughs> Lotus I Petal's grab, Lotus I try Petal to grab one because I'm like, oh, everyone's sleeping on Lotus Petal. Right. And then it's like, nope, no one's sleeping on Lotus Petal. But the Lotus Petal that people do sleep on uh, is one of my pet cards, which is Simeon Spirit Guide. Um, yeah. Um, we've got uh, the Time Vault, Tinker, and there's plenty of other value stuff that right. can come from this list. Like, Jeff, uh, yeah. traditionally in our heads, Blight Steel Colossus is what you get you can grab with, that with Tinker. I've, you know, I've tried to float it, and then Mark has said, ha I I'm took gonna... it from me that one time. Oh, that was you? Well, I took it, but I, I, had an, I, I had a Karn board plus a Vivian board, so I could grab yeah. it two ways, and I had Urza Big Man at Academy. So that was the... I, I do believe it was one of, another Discord where that was right. that was something that Mark uh, snagged from out from under me. But, yeah, um, yeah it's... Like, there's 
you just pick up Tinker early, and then there's a billion other things you can get with it. Yeah. Um, we are. Right, here's the life. Yep. Um, so we're getting life from the loan from Jason, and <laughs> hit me up over there. Oh, you take that. Let me hit this up. I mean, life is an interesting one. So life is a card that's so powerful in constructed formats, right? Um, so powerful in constructed formats, but it doesn't really perform so it's been taken 26 out of 70 uh usually around 22 so it's a little early but not too bad it, it's a card that works great when you when you want it uh and when you need it but it's a card that also can just kind of get you in dirtle land sometimes where you're just you know oh i'm gonna i'm gonna loam oh i'm gonna loam and then you're just dirtling and you lose so with jason playing ponza um he has crucible yes uh but Crucible can get blown up. You need a redundancy piece. And Life from the Loam does a very, very good job of that. Uh, he's he's not necessarily, and not even not necessarily, he's unlikely to use this with Dark Depths and Thespian Stage. It doesn't really help out that combo. Right. But what he is going to be doing with it is if he doing did. a burning of Genie right. or, uh, or a, what's the other? <laughs> the, well, so to ramp into that burning earlier is do it, does he see a birds out of him or a? Um, I mean, so you know he's it's interesting because he's doing the Naya thing. So it's are we doing noble hierarchy or are we doing ignoble? Uh, probably both, but yeah, birds right. comes first uh, in a list like that. Okay, we have a so we have a late Dothy Voidwalker nice from Max. Um, that is a card that you I think and there's the questing beast. Um, I'm glad I'm glad Jason picked that up when uh, Darian was talking about uh, his win con and saying that uh, you know we're looking at field of the dead. To me, in my head, that's like it's this really is slow. this it, is somebody who is coming from a constructed perspective, right. and it is overwhelming. But so many of these wins come out of nowhere. Come out of nowhere. They're not or, necessarily fast. Or you have a wrath. They effect. just come out of nowhere. Right. When I had field of the dead. It was not my win con. It was like just a tertiary thing. It's a value. There was card. a couple games that it did great in. Yeah, but the rest of the time it was just a card. So, for it's me, not a win con. I agree. And for me, uh, when Darian was talking about that, I you know I wanted to. I love the damn pick from Mighty Hero. Oh yeah, that is it's very very good with that deck. Re- spot removal or sweeper, it's super flexible. And I also anticipate from Heidi that we'll be seeing uh, either an anguish on making or a vindicate here in the next five right. to ten ish rounds. Um, but. Uh, what I was, what I wanted to say to Darian was like, "Hey, questing beast?" Question mark. But even more so than that, uh, what I think is the best green creature in this format that it's a damn shame it hasn't been picked yet is uh, Hex Drinker. Hex, yeah. Hex Drinker is the best green creature. Hex Drinker in gets BRD. slipped on, and then every time I get blown out by it, like, it's it's so ridiculous. A turn one Hex Drinker. Just it, it's almost the equivalent of having two extra cards in your hand. The things that it's allowed to do and the way that you can like effectively use your mana while retaining cards in your hand and having it be a very aggressive, painful uh, threat that's on board that only gets better and more evasive and more oh. powerful. <laughs> People keep trying to grab Mike Max's stuff. Hyphenated brings up an interesting thing. So one thing that you and I, we draft in yeah. the discords a lot. And here, library definitely has a higher value in the discords. It's been seen a lot more there. Right. One thing else I'm noticing as the person that straddles these two worlds is that, like, Max was able to grab around 17 preordain. Coming from this world, I typically find in the discords that I undervalue. I'm, I'm always a little late on the preordains and the ponders and things like that. Like, the, certain people in the discord group, like STI... Uh, hyphenated ever like those cards get sucked up like a vacuum much yeah. earlier than they do in these face to faces. Yeah. And I find that very interesting. Yeah. Well, we also like to pull from a wider pool of people here. Um, and that means we don't have a developed meta. Not everybody is sticking around to right. watch eight to 12 hours worth of, of VRD. And they're not intimately studying these deck lists. They're coming in with a plan and it's really hard. It is. You come in and you're getting up before 8 a.m., which, you know, for me is a death sentence, basically. I don't know how I did it today. Probably yeah, the, the lack of side. lack of stress uh, involved with not having to play today. But you get, a, like, very little sleep. It is, uh, it is a straight-through three-hour draft. And 
you sometimes just for preserving your mental energy because you still have to play for like six to eight hours. You have to just like stick on a line and go with it and recognizing the fact that like preordain is still around two picks or two rounds after you thought it wasn't, it it was like good to go. It's hard. Um, And it's not even necessarily the best call to, to snag that stuff. So Sounds like we've got Peter back, so why don't you go ahead and stub out for about another eight or ten picks and come back in, and then I'll sub out. Uh, Peter, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Cool. cool. All right. All right. So, let's, yeah, so let's just rotate around and go, go get us some scoops, brother. Hex, yep. Hex Drinker, Stoneforge Mystic. That's what we're looking for. All right, all right. So okay. those are the hot brand takes. So, uh, what, catching up to what you see here, Peter, what are you what are you interested in? What are you seeing that uh, impresses you? Um, what impresses me is Dan taking high tide and turnabout. I really didn't think we'd see that part of the combo in this deck. I thought we would have stuck to the LED and wheels plan to mm-hmm. get there. Um, high tide and turnabout does make this easier, but also opens up additional combo potential, which means Dan's iteration on this build might be coming to fruition. Okay. And I don't know what additional oh, cards uh, Dan's looking to pick up. But. There, there's the stone forge that uh, Brandon has been all about. So going to yep. Jason. To uh, Jason. So what I pulled up here was Intrepid Adversary. Uh, this mm-hmm. card has been pretty phenomenal for me. Like it's just one of those things that even coming down as a we, we just said it. I don't have anything to say. Yeah, okay. I'm just putting my... What? Look at that. He calls people it. need to listen to what I have to say. Uh, adversary has, like, even coming down as, like, one of you vial it in. It's crazy off a of vial, right? Like, you vial yep. it in on two and then just pay two. Just a plus one, plus one. But, like, there's been so... I drafted it in blue-white humans and, you know, just you hit that, hit that six mana and you're like, cool, do this. Swing, win. Uh, oh, okay. So in tomb and exhum, uh, Max maybe says no, not storm. Maybe I'm gonna go a little reanimator, which is again quite common for a first draft strategy. Yep. Um, and we're seeing the graveyard hate pretty spread around. Yeah. Cage. So it might be a good time. Needle feels about right there. Um, a bull of citadel from Jeff is interesting. Power card that's hard to pull off because of the mana, but. Uh, an interesting potential tinker target, tinkering yes. into combo pieces. He's tra- uh, if he transmutes for it, right. he still has to. Does he have to pay the black difference? I honestly don't know how. Uh, yeah, uh, transmute artifacts weird. So yeah, let me. Um, it is convert a converted value. Okay. Okay. So it takes the black into consideration. Ooh, blight steel as well from Jeff. Yeah, so go ahead and grab it. I mean, it can go to somebody else. I don't see it going to anyone else here, um, but it is. this is a spot where sometimes you just got to, okay, I'm going to take that just in case, in case someone gets froggy. And Jeff yep. is known enough as a as a quality player that he's the type of player that people will hate draft off of and be froggy just to make Jeff go, what the hell? And, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff has the Tinker and the Time Vault, so... It's not like anybody else is going to move in on that. Council's Count. Judgment. This is on my card. I have two cards that I have as the have been forgotten a lot lately. Um, and this is one of them. Um, okay. If Rafelos is the other one. Because uh, <laughs> um, I think Rafelos, a lot of people say it has to be in mono green. But I think Rafelos, even in just like a green red, even if you've got four or five forests or a Yavamaya, Rafelos just has yes. lots of value. But ju- yep. judgment is just all around really good removal here. Um, you're going to get one thing, and it doesn't target. And, you know, as long as it's not a land, you're going to get that. And yeah. and if they fuck up, you're going to get two things. <laughs> yeah. My my thought about judgment was it was below prismatic ending. Right. And right. possibly tied with March of Otherworldly Light. Right. And that's why it's gone down. March can't hit a Planeswalker um, where yeah. judgment can. Uh, but that's why judgment has kind of been forgotten in some ways because there's just that plethora of of those two on top of the swords and everything else that yeah I thought March would be would edge out judgment because it's an instant it does, so yeah. it'll... for sure let's see we saw the arbor elf from Jason which is 
you know, is your not, it's not, not surprising. I mean, I think birds yeah. is better. I, I think birds is a better pick there. Um, or um, ignoble hierarchy. Right. I, you know, Mike still, I mean, so I, I think one of those, that's probably up there with the cabal therapy in round seven as the, Hey, you could, oh. you could have waited for that. He has Yavamaya, so it untaps anything, right? It does, if he has Yavamaya, yeah. um, which is fine. But yeah. it's still, the other is simply better, right? Yeah. Because if when, you go turn one mana confluence into an Arbor yes. Elf, you're whatever. If you go turn one mana confluence into a Birds, you're sitting pretty, right? Like, yes, yeah, which, which makes the Bird the better option okay. overall. You're... And this comes okay. from the only deck I play in Modern is Ponza. Right, like okay. I don't even have modern decks anymore. If I go to play a modern event, I'm like, so I'm like, does someone have Ponza? No. You know, <laughs> every set I looked for the next finisher in that deck before I build that deck, <laughs> and I, I love Thunder Maw and I love Clothes. I still like I Inferno. Inferno I still like Inferno Titan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so before we talk about dress down, Darian described the deck they're playing as something that is actually kind of analogous to the land to the slower lands deck in legacy, which sees mana bonds okay. and sees exploration. Do you think we'd actually see those two? It, especially with the feel of the dead plan? Uh, mana bond for sure. Exploration. I, I would be less high on, but uh, especially with the fast bond, it's a duplicate effect that's unnecessary, yeah. but, but uh, I know Caterberg had for his last uh, VRD presents where he went Merfolk. He had another mm -hmm. theory list that he was looking at that uh, involved Monobond. So okay. Uh, ooh, I like the frantic search, uh, but also the paradigm shift here. Does this phase all creatures out? No, shift is. I'm pretty sure is a Thassa's Oracle piece. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I play this in uh, Commander. Yeah, it's a, and, often a commander. So Paradigm Shift basically is two mana, sorcery, remove all cards from your library, shuffle your graveyard into your library. Yes, yeah, so it plays with Thoracle, Lab Band, yeah. uh, four mana Jace. Exactly. And there's no way we see an Inverter of Truth. Uh, we right? saw it out of Jeff last time, um, yeah. but that doesn't mean, I don't think we'll see it out of him this time. That, yeah. that would be. Uh, so you had comments about Dress Down. Let's hear it. So this is a weird list to put dress down in. You have no immediate benefit in your own main. It's a defensive dress down. That's what I thought. Yeah. Unless for some reason we have not seen the dust shadow. Mason yeah. just no, no. It's it's hundred percent a defensive dress down. I I know Mason's yeah. drafts. I I mean again, Mason and I go all, play all the time in the in the discords. That is a that card is commonly taken in the tempo decks in the discords mm -hmm. as just a draw card and a defense spell. Um, yes. Caterberg. So we're going to see it in the main because it cycles. Caterberg thinks he's going to Stephanot. It is a possibility. Um, I think sometimes when, as here in the announcing booth, we overlook for the combos and underlook for like, well, how is that just a, a value card, a defensive card? You know, that's yeah. I, looking at the list and the protection spells, the tempo spells that Mason has taken, dress down does kind of smack of that like defensive ability where I just cycle it when I don't need it right. in the main. It yeah, doesn't exactly. have to be a sideboard card. Doesn't have to be a combo slot. So. Exactly. It's, I like it's, that it's a cheap cantrip, you know, at yes. worst. And then yeah. sometimes it's just going to stop something for a turn. Yep. Yeah. So Mike takes Dark Confidant yeah. Conf possibly away from Heidi? Uh, possibly. Think? Yeah, I mean, possibly. I, I don't know where Heidi was going to fall in that, uh, but, you know, it definitely fits well in Mike's deck. So, mm -hmm. And this is about yeah. where I think Confidant should go nowadays. Like, it's, you know, it used to be, like, the top one of the first creatures drafted. And then it's, yep. it's fallen. This is about the right spot for Confidant. Okay. So, and there's no, uh, <laughs> there's no real fear that an early Dark Confidant's just going to nug you out of the game, right? Not really. No. No. Yeah. Okay. Let's yeah. See. The conversation at the table was just about Micah Synth Lattice. Jeff was waiting, and what he was saying is, you know, for the next five picks or so, you know, I'm not gonna. I don't think that anybody's ever going to take those cards. And uh, Heidi was saying. I mean, there's a there's a card you should probably take, <laughs> and then he's like, "Well, you know, well," and he's kind of kibitzing, and uh, the, the table starts getting kind of loud about hate drafting, and he's like, you, "You're right, you're all right, you're right, you're right." You're right. <laughs> so, nice. uh, for the next uh, several picks from Jeff, uh, expect to see some cardboard, some trans. Does he already have transmute artifact? He yes. yes. Um, but you know, just stuff 11. that is going to either. Uh, pair well 
artisanally with Tinker or just kind of fill out the fill out the main board, but it's not going to be stuff that anybody else is looking for. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. The, what's, I don't know how to feel about it. Dan took Talarian Academy in 12. Right. With not a whole lot of artifact. Yeah. Uh, I, so, I mean, the whole, the, the whole breacher. Like, the whole breacher power, the plan is power there. And he, don't forget, he has the vault and the monolith. So... I don't think it's bad there a lot, and he's got the chrome box. A lot of times it's just going to be one, which is fine. Yep. But when he is whole breacher, it's ridiculous, right? Yes. Um, so I think it's not a all in plan. It's a this is going to be at least an island plan, and mm-hmm. I would expect to see him draft. And it should be now. This should be a contested one because Jeff's also going to look for these. I should yes. uh, uh, expect to see him draft. Uh, see the synod, um, as well. Okay. Right. So. Uh, so- for Jeff to take seat, well, so either Dan or right either Dan or Jeff both want seat, right? Oh, okay. They both want artifact lands because mm-hmm. the seat's a tinker target uh, that you yes. can tinker out. Uh, but for Dan, it tur- the artifact lands turn on the um, the academy real quick. The academy, yeah. yeah. And I, Ooh, it's weird. To- see, Max speaking my language here. I you know, early on, I was yeah, not happy you. with Max's draft, but I think he's rolling. I mean, the Oko's a little weird because it's like, is this Grixis or what? But it looks like he, he's like he's the Ruby's just going to be value, and it looks mm-hmm. like he's just going to be in kind of a buggy, controlly. Like I like both of the Ashiox here. Dream Renders just right. backbreaking and Nightmare Weaver too. Um, they're pretty sick. Do so in Tomb and Exhum just kind of play the value role with. Right now, Dothy Voidwalker. Yeah, but I mean, he can grab, like, what's he going to grab? I mean, he can, you can go anywhere with that. There's so many targets for those, right? Yeah. Like, we're not going to see, like, a larger mill plan, right? We're not going to see, like, Atasha's hideous laughter come out of Max. No, I don't think so. I I mean, you, you'll occasionally see, you might actually, I might more like see see that out of Mason for the board. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, against some of these decks, like, against Mike, Tasha's is back breaking. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't expect that out of Max, um, mm-hmm. but I, I could see, you know, if he goes more in on the Entomb and the Exhum, you know, it would become interesting to where it goes. Um, but there's just so many powerful targets for those things. Uh, yeah. yeah. Lion Sash is good, hyphenated. You're right. Like, it is, um, you know, like, was Scoo's taken at this point? So No. Oh, but he's got, no. ah, but he's got Stoneforge. Lion Sash yes. moves above Scoo's. In because the Stoneforge, Forge, yeah. right. And actually, Lion yep. Sash is... A, so, here's the thing with Lion Sash. If white is his least good color, Lion, Lion Sash needs white mana, which makes it a little awkward. But it gets the counters off any permanent, where Scooz only gets it off creatures. So that's one of the interesting things about Lion Sash, is the counters come from any permanent. Yeah, it grows larger. And it's an equipment which can be fished up with SF... Right. And instead of unlicensed source, which also can grow over time. Right. Right. So. Okay. Vanishing where, verse. Where have we seen unlicensed hearse? Hearse has been. Um, so I, it wow. may not be in any of ours yet here. Um, no. It, but it's definitely been in the online. So hearse has been coming from here down at this point. Mm-hmm. Oh, we get expect to see it anywhere. Um, it has been yeah three of the five online, usually around forty two. Uh, mm-hmm. But again, it's kind of been moving up. Uh, but it's definitely a player, right? It's a it's yeah. a player for sure. I, I would figure you're a load of the ground red deck might want it, and then the artifact combo deck, neither of which we have in this draft, right. could pick it a little higher because Je- it, Jeff's uh, potentially. Right. I mean, because it's also good out of a card board, right? I yeah. mean, um, yeah, Caterberg wishes he would have taken it in with the Merfolk, like it would have been beautiful there for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, Jace the Mind Sculptor, how the mighty fall. Yeah. That card just continues to tumble and tumble and tumble. You know what? Like, it's one of those cards. Last time I took it, uh, I I was dead in hand with it a lot of the time, and it was miserable. And then I had just in a recent draft, I lost two games to it. <laughs> so it's just like it's a funny card. Oh yeah. Uh, Heidi showing the depth of the black white removal exile suite. Right. Um, Vanishing verse. Nice, quick, powerful for mono colored. Really good in here. I'm not seeing a lot of multicolor stuff that comes in. Um, an, an interesting, speaking of the monocolor, multicolor thing, uh, we saw this in some MRDs, and I think it's mm-hmm. actually good enough possibly for VRD. Uh, one that we've seen in the last couple of MRDs that's really kind of shaken. So, we, so we've been doing some modern rotisseries um, 
online. Uh, and what is this guy's name? Not generous gift. General. Uh, the human. Yeah, the human, the red white one. Generous general. Uh, I thought ge the the general was the black white one. Well, there's that guy, but there's um, the red white one that when you play a multicolor spell makes. Um, oh, the four fours is from yeah. Modern Horizons too. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, because what's good about him is a three drop is he's got protection from mono color. So, like, what is your oh. most of your good removal in the format? Right, it's swords. It's a lot of it's mono color. He's immune to. Oh, speaking of, holy crap. He is immune to things that some things that we have not seen yet, um, mm -hmm. which are fury and solitude and general Ferris Rockerick. There we go. F E R R O U S. F E R R. Okay. Um, yeah, the only. No, it, it, oh, it keeps correcting <laughs> to general generous gift. Generous gift, yeah. Oh yeah, you need to scroll the uh, the draft page. Yeah, I'm going getting ready to. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. I don't know. I'm not worried about it anymore. We know who we're talking about. Uh, yeah. Draft page. Yeah, we haven't seen solitude. We haven't seen subtlety or fury. We've just seen endurance. Okay. Okay. Um. There's relic for Mike. Engineer for Dan. What is Dan doing now? No, I mean he's got that little artifact sub plan. I mean I. You know, Dan Smart. I, I I imagine there's a plan for it. We'll see. That's interesting oh, to me, though. I would have mentioned grief if grief was better than it is, but grief. I mean, so the subtlety is the worst in this format of these of those five, in my opinion, um, just because it's limited in what it can hit. Um, grief yeah. is is in the right deck is super bonkers, mm -hmm. um, but is you know definitely fury is the one that man why is this always fury is the one that confused us in the last paper draft when it was in the painter servant deck because we didn't think about painter servant right. naming red right yeah no fury is actually like become fury and solitude are the best two right now like on the online <laughs> ones they have become the top two dogs mm -hmm. um i'm spelling subtlety right s-u-b-t-l-e t what S -U -B -T, yeah or it, t l e not e-l L -E. I cannot spell this right the first time ever, so we're in the same there boat. But okay. in, we talked about this earlier when we talked about Karn, where the Planeswalker plan was fantastic. Mm -hmm. People learned about it, and now it's kind of dissipated. But if we were going back to that, I, that's where I think subtlety picks up. That's why I had it as a higher pick overall, because right. if these drafts shift again, I think subtlety picks way, way up. Right. Yeah, the uh, but Fury and Solitude are just wildly good. Um, oh, hands down, yeah. But yeah, uh, so where I've seen the best success with grief are things like turn one grief, uh, you know, and then reanimate grief, mm -hmm. uh, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, so. kind of living the dream like people thought about with ephemerate in modern, right. where it's just, oh, the number of ways you can just essentially re-trigger the enter the battlefield, that just blows out the doors on grief. It makes it so good. Yeah, like it, I, my best was turn one dark writ grief, reanimate yeah. grief, him to Turok. Uh, yeah. Uh, All right, so we've got a Mason on a hold up here. Mason's like going deep, thinking, wondering what's going on here. Him it's, went. Him went. So, mm -hmm. I mean, grief would be good in Mike's deck, and it could also be good in Max's deck. Like, it is uh, definitely a, a player at this point. Here. Oh, absolutely. They have the ability to to evoke it. Yeah, which is what you want. I don't think you're ever going to hard cast it. Well, I mean, Max has got the ability to turn to hard cast it off a dark red. I mean, that's. I I think that might be a more magical Christmas land than anything, but yeah, because there comes a point where is land, like let's say land mocks dark red grief better than land mocks dark red mind twist you. Uh, well, yeah, it depends. I mean, depends. On, yeah, I mean, the, the the fact that grief is a creature and stays around, depending on the draft, can have that extra value. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. And you can always threaten the retrigger with right. a value reanimator and tomb or uh, not in tomb. Uh exhum. Not, yeah. Right, exhum we... or unearth. But no, you can't unearth it because it costs no okay. Oh, so I'm checking to see if we're actually held up or if like we just hadn't it's not up updating. Hey Mark, can you check are we held up at Mason or it's we're just having an updating issue? Because here on screen we're held up at Mason. Yeah. 
I do like Mike's pickup of Shattering Spree. All right, now here we, we're moving on. Ooh, Lethal yeah. Scheme Might. This is one that I was, in our recent preview show, I was uh, talking about, and I said that it had some pretty sick value, and I'm glad to see it go. So I don't know if she watched the show or she just schemed this on her own. Uh, <laughs> ha, 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 ha. So you you have liked uh, you have liked it hyphenated the subtlety. All right, so lethal scheme is two black and two with convoke. Um, so you know, in fantasy land, you can get it for free for four, but uh, mm -hmm. creatures. But most likely, you're getting it for two. And then each creature you convoked with gets to connive, so it gives you a little draw and possibly puncture creatures. Um, yeah, it's a, a very solid removal spell, even if you have to pay three. Right, but in, in the creature deck, you know pretty exceptional i'm assuming exactly. that we just have a extra space after scheme no have we just not been updated i wonder so this is our first nuka pinna card i wonder if our sheet is old and hasn't been updated as much as a possibility i'm gonna pass this to brandon and i'm gonna go talk to mark and try to figure this out real quick i'll be right back well it's nuka pinna commander it's not just Okay, never mind. I will not be right back. It was fixed. All right, we have it fixed. So, okay, so uh, the table has quieted down from their early morning hysteria. That's not a great word. Raucousness. Raucousness is much better. Uh, so the, the 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 mood is kind of settling into uh, the long life of a drafter here we're about halfway through um and right on cue we see a lot of uh the sideboard cards coming out so we were just discussing lethal scheme is an interesting uh, with the convoke so to make it cheaper and you know even potentially in a, in a magic christmas land free um do you know this card are you familiar with this one? i am not hold up right over there uh Oh, it's Convoke. Okay, so it's not Delve. All right, it's Convoke. And then with um, each creature you Convoke, you get a draw card and discard a card. And they can get a counter. Interesting. I mean, that seems very good. Yeah, I like it. was on my preview show uh, list of like, good cards. Yeah, um, it's interesting. We've, uh, we've also gone away from the Planeswalker kind of meta. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of up and coming uh, roughly a year, year and a half ago. Um, and it seems as though it's calmed. It's, it's, it's certainly calmed. And so cards that I thought were kind of chronically underdrafted, like elder spell, um, there's not a whole lot of point to, to drafting them, especially at this point. If you don't have to worry about actually, it is, what, it is what, 1130 now. So I guess yeah. it's probably time to say that, uh, I'm going to go break out a Budweiser and say the Budweiser is the, oh, there we go. Budweiser is the official unofficial sponsor of VR, St. Louis VRD. That's true. St. Louis City. You know, the reason we have such a good, consistently highly rated drinking water in the city of St. Louis is because of Budweiser. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of public utilities that are worth writing home about in the great state of Missouri, but our drinking water is one of them, at least in St. Louis. So go. thank you, Budweiser. Tyler's Tracker. Nice. All right, I'm going to fade out for a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tireless Tracker is a very good pick from Jason here. Um, oh, yeah. I uh, I love those cards where you can uh, just get a fat butt mm -hmm. that also synergizes really well and opens up a lot of your options. Uh, you know, allows you to um, kind of get out of a mid-game stall. Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> so there we see a lot of excitement from the crowd. Uh, with Grove, Grove. Of the Burn Willows, and Punishing Fire, which is perhaps one of the least impressive combos that yeah. is consistently drafted in VRD. It, I, it doesn't do a whole lot if you don't have four Punishing Fires in your deck, so I don't know. I, I, I made mention of this before. After, I thought about it when Darian was doing the interview, that the way the deck was described was the grinding version of Legacy Lands. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to disparage it because Darian's got a lot of uh, very good pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, 
in in the list and that they've drafted so far. Uh, you've got Fast Bond, Strip Mine, Crucible. So right there, if you get that online, you're great. Uh, yeah. But describing Field of the Dead as the win con is concerning a little bit to me. And Grove plus Punishing Fire uh, on top of that feels uh, like, like Darian might be in for... Uh, a rough time when it comes to the late game and these, those kinds of things are online yes. and it just let it, those are two cards that you just drafted that have let your opponent off the hook. Yeah. It's, it was going to be a bumpy road without Ren and six to go with the ramming up excavator, but continuing to lean on that plan mm-hmm. of recursion from the graveyard, be it lands or punishing fire is going to make this an even rockier road. Right. Uh, absolutely. When Darian said Field of the Dead, my thought was, okay, we're going to see like three snow lands yeah. in the last three picks because you need that expansive list. And without Renin 6 trying to pick up the canopy lands, yeah. as they're called, doesn't really work out that well with just Excavator. I agree. Um, so... Looking over these most recent picks, uh, Max with uh, Lily into Lily, or Ashiok into Ashiok, and then Lily into <laughs> yep. Lily. Entomb yep. and Exhum, too. This is it's very cute. I like what Max is doing with that. Uh, but uh, Jason, in my opinion, has, have, has had the best last seven picks coming out of the break. Just, pardon my French, but just absolutely freaking slinging. Mm-hmm. Quite, like, these are just win cons right here. Quest yeah. and Beast... Yes, Stoneforge Mystic, absolutely. Tireless Tracker and Nissa who shakes the world. This is the these are the kind of cards that uh, that Darian has wanted to draft and has taken none of over the last seven rounds. Yeah, um, and then you know we see Jeff over the last seven Bolus's Citadel uh, being a great tinker target uh, yep. outside of you know just getting a blight steal. Um, and it's always good to have ones that not only can you cast if you have to, but, uh, that if you have like, let's say a blight steel in your hand, you can still get something else that's particularly meaningful. Yes. Um, so we've got Heidi here. Good value removal. Yeah. Heidi's just sticking to it. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. There's a lot of commotion going on there. Uh, Is it about the dread boar? Uh, I don't know. I th- I think it might have been about the chain of vapor. Okay. Uh, which I'll I will pull up. That's the blue one, right? Uh, so it makes sense. That's, that's vapor snag, maybe. No, no, no. Chain of vapor. There, because there's a. It's a cycle. Chain of blank. It's a cycle from onslaught. One of each color. Yeah. Chain of vapor is the blue one. Okay. I'm this this is outing me as a noob. No, it's fine. Chain of Vapor is very much a vintage constructed card. It's not a combo card necessarily because you copy the spell, so you're not adding to your storm count, but it immediately, but it does allow you to bounce your board of Moxen back to your hand to replay them to gain storm. That said, it returns any non land permanent to its owner's hand for the yeah. measly price of one blue mana. So it's fantastic. Yeah. Chain of Smog and Chain of Acid, the black and green ones respectively, gotcha. are the combo cards you see with Witherbloom Apprentice and Professor Onyx. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Chain of Vapor makes a lot of sense to really just get there with... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, get there with Brain Freeze. I'm talking to the back of the mic. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, I love those kind of... Uh, Combos. Love seeing those kinds of cards picked with Brain Freeze. Um, You know, Paradoxical Outcome is a great value engine, but having only one of them in your deck and also having it cost four, uh, Paradoxical Outcome forces you to uh, have a bit more of a... uh, Forces you a bit more into the mid-game so that Mm -hmm. you have to... uh, 
Oh, and there's the Vindicate from Heidi. Uh, forces you to put up a kind of defensive perimeter, which sometimes is at odds with what that deck is trying to do by having a lot of mana rocks. And um, so I like you kind of have to, you don't have to, but play stuff like Fog Bank or okay. Dovin, you know? Yeah. And it does work very well with like Dovin or Narset because. <laughs> Those are the uncommon tick down planeswalkers from War of the Spark that are very good because of their passive ability, yeah. not their not necessarily their tick down. And so yeah. getting to refresh those or save them from removal with Chain of Vapor or Paradoxical Outcome, like that's that's great. That's that's how you wanna construct mm-hmm. those kinds of cards. Um the way I've been looking at Paradoxical Outcome from a VRD standpoint isn't from a combo, like, I'm going to storm out this turn. It is less defensive, but, like you're saying, but more, for me, about artifact combo. And I want to be on the blue deck. I want it to be Thoughtcast's number one and two, yeah. then Thoughtcast, then Thought Monitor. I want Urza in my deck. Yeah. I want Affinity Creatures, so that when I redeploy, I'm just redeploying for free. Yeah. Um, Dockside that Jeff pick, just picked up is a card that I wouldn't have thought to add to a deck like that, but it's also fantastic. You can't redraw off the treasure tokens, but it helps power out a PO. Yeah. Okay. Max is doing something very interesting, taking the bizarre and to animate. So. Interesting. You know, two of the biggest pillars of dragon combo, but. Accurate. Uh, it, I mean, so we talked about Mike going into kind of a value reanimator. He picked up reanimate, mm-hmm. um, but then has seen, it seemed like he has kind of, uh, backed off of that track, uh, and Max is kind of picking up, uh, the slack in the meantime. I'm not, uh, not entirely sure where Max goes with this. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, Max has two Moxen, right? Uh, uh, yes. Wait, uh, there's the Mox Ruby, but does Max have an Soul off-brain Ring? Mox? Yeah, just Ruby. Ruby, and is it Soul Ring? So I can... And Soul Ring, yes. Okay. So, um, it's interesting with this list. It's, uh, at the very beginning of this draft, we were kind of talking about, like, where Mana Crypt goes, and Soul Ring is obviously, like, the most similar card to Mana Crypt, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think that Max uh, not shot himself in the foot because it's it's one pick and Soul Ring is still a very good card. But if mm-hmm. you look at all of these mana costs for the picks recently, they're all double color and one colorless. Bang sheet. And s- what? Bang sheet. Exclamation point sheet in the chat. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I got it. Yeah. Oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. All right. So, um, I I am too neurodivergent to remember what the oh yeah, yeah. the soul ring into. I mean, too. if you're just looking at what's uh what we can see right in front of us, Dothy Voidwalker doesn't help. Entomb no exhum. Ashiox, Liliana's, Bazaar's, Animate, none of that gets any value off of Soul Ring. So, um, like, it's not going to sink anything, but it's it, it it's meaningful. It means that sometimes Soul Ring, uh, if you don't have it in your opening hand, it just doesn't help you. Mm-hmm. That, you don't want it to be dead like that. Yeah, no. A lot of the points you just made, it's kind of why I think people don't think about Soul Ring correctly in Commander. Okay. Because if it's not in your opening hand or the first few draws, I think Soul Ring is a dead card, but you want to increase your opportunity to get out to a fast start, so you play Soul Ring and Crypt and Vault, and you got to be redundant like that in Commander. And I think it's the same kind of thing for Max. If you want it to be on these cards, you need it to be more redundant than just take Soul Ring. Yeah. Um, I... I've had some good drafts and I've definitely had some bad drafts that I'm, you know, I'm willing to try stuff uh, and try to mash too many things into one deck. And uh, you learn a lot of lessons about what works and what doesn't 
from doing mm-hmm. that. And the Mana Crypt Soul Ring taking up a slot in your deck when it doesn't offer you any advantage. Uh, in a 40-card format, it really hurts you. Um, looking at, like, let's just say looking at a Mana Vault and mm-hmm. recognizing that it's not been picked uh, until round 15. Not saying that it, like, it works with Dan's deck. But if somebody else in round 14 looked at it and said, oh, Mana Vault hasn't been taken, for example, if that was Max, you, it it's still a very good card and should have been picked earlier, but that doesn't mean that you're the one who should have picked it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, just, like I said, it's just this kind of sacred cow and, and moving off of the pivot from why take Slow Ring originally to where we are now, we're looking at kind of the ramifications of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, I'm, I got to know what's going on with Max. Like, it's difficult to talk about this deck. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm really curious what the animate target is going to be. I mean, yeah. we could see something where we get World Gorger into a uh, bitter ordeal. Uh, okay. But it doesn't have a huge other, doesn't have a huge number of other creatures. Dothy Voidwalker is good for that though, because you can kind of sacrifice it on command. Mm-hmm. Um, which uh, is nice because we have previously seen in a VRD where uh, a world gorger was reanimated and there was there wasn't anything else in the graveyard. So that that W turned into I, I, a D I, a dub oh, yeah. R A W. Yep. So while we've been musing about Max, Dan picked up Narset's reversal, which is way early. Way, way early in this draft. Yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot of, um, you know, replacement type effects for that. You have your your twin cast. I imagine he's targeting himself with Narset Traversal most of the time. Sure. That's, yep. That's what I thought. As and and well. that's the value of Narset Traversal is that you can do get a target yourself, but you can also just stop somebody else. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the Torak and Comball. Uh, the Comball shows that the Nurse uh, Lutri will be main deck, not in the board. Uh, not as a, you know, most likely, because combo's three, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And our sense reversal is one card that adds two to your storm count. Right. Um, so, like, that's very relevant. If, if mm-hmm. I mean, Dan's win con is brain freeze, so... Uh, and he'll probably, with, with the treasures in the wish, he will put, I guarantee he will put tendrils in the board. To wish in the middle of the storm, yeah, with the treasures. Um, but yeah, like you know, if we're talking about brain freeze, two additional uh, storm triggers on brain freeze is six cards, which is fifteen percent of your opponent's deck. Uh, obviously, at this point, your opponent has already drawn eight cards, so uh, you know we're looking at six out of thirty-two, six out of thirty-three. So it's an even higher percentage. Uh, you know, closer to 20%. And so it's it's extremely relevant in addition to being able to uh, bounce one of your opponent's things back. So with Mason's deck here, I, I you know, a Tsunami looks really good um, in this draft right now. Oh, I like the Clothis. I'm a big fan of this card. I think it's interesting. Um So Clothis, God of Destiny, um, is just, it's either this is a little bit of ramp or this a little bit of damage, and it just kind of keeps going. It became a win con in Ponza for a little bit, but going back to what uh, Peter and I were discussing earlier as, you know, Ponza's win con of choice. Oh, that's a late Jason's Ren Prodigy. That feels good for Max in that in that deck right now. That yeah. feels really good. Uh, did you get any intel? On no, it? not okay. really. All right, and then there we see uh, Primetime, Field of the Dead, Dryad of Lysian Grove, um, uh, all three cards, and Valakut. Oh, so see, see, Scape Shift, that is a card I really like as a win con for for Darien's deck. I like that much better than Field of the Dead. Even without Scape Shift. And even works with Field of the Dead. Right, even without Scape Shift, Primetime will just, you know, give you Valakut value with the Dryad out, you know. Oh, here's the wildfire. Oh, you know what? Win you, or lose, I, even, he's cranking my crank. Even with these headphones on, I just heard a Jason cackle. Yeah. So. Yeah, wildfire was the, was the name of the, the burning of Jinye, uh 
right. uh, corollary. So yeah. even if he loses completely and goes 07, he drafted a wildfire, all right? But it has been picked 5 out of 70. So, I mean, you know. that's a, and usually that's a right about now, actually. Look, 27. He, he's right on cue for where <laughs> the people that want wildfire want wildfire. Okay. So Jeff is in Is It? Is he f- firmly in Is It? I mean, he's it got Dak. Like he's it. got Dockside. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying he's coming out of it. I'm, I'm. Oh, he's also so he's in Jess guy because he right. has uh, Teferi. So, um, what else? Uh, so could, it, what else could we see okay. from Jeff, uh, Visa V? Uh, uh, Mystic Forge. Uh, it's a card he's drafted before. He yeah. likes a lot. Um, uh, maybe it's a misplay in general. That's because this is the second time I've had trouble with. Uh, R R A L, G E N A L. No, it's E R. Okay, because like every time I, I try to do a general card, it keeps popping up. Uh, uh, generous gift. It's like, do you mean generous gift? I would just enter. Yeah. See. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's so weird. Like, because I, I, I was trying to pull up the uh, the general Ferris Roku earlier, and it kept saying, "Do you mean generous gift?" I don't know. That's weird. Uh, General Kudru is one that she mentioned earlier. That's why I was trying to pull it up here. Uh, it is a uh, the, the white-black three-drop that gives your... Uh, no. Uh, all right, whatever. Here, I can hold it for you if you want to type. Um, it, it, it's a white-black three-drop that gives your uh, people indestructible, all your legendaries indestructible. Now, is that just for that until end of turn? No, it's period. It's a, it's a big effect. Right? Damn. That's a... I don't know. Oh, that's weird. It hates the word general. Like, uh, that is so weird. Okay, whatever. Uh, unholy Heat, very... Oh, so that's... Oh, unholy okay. Unholy Heat's interesting there. I mean, that's their first red card. He has the green... Maybe he saw that there's enough red open. He's like, screw this. I'm just going to go to the red temple. I'm going to go. Wait, Mason has green? He had, uh, well, he had uh, land. He had breeding pole. Interesting. So he had breeding pole as an early pickup there. But, like, I mean, at this point, red's so undrafted. Like, you're just like, I'm going to grab uh, the giant, and I'm going to grab Unholy Heat. I'm going to uh, grab Fury, and I'm just going to make this blue red tempo and just run this table. Uh, are, is this next pick going to be Darcy? Is it, are we going to see Dragon's Rage Channeler now? I don't I mean. The question is, does he go in on red enough to get Fury? Which are, by the way, Fury, Solitude are both still undrafted, which are... Yeah. Uh, see, Heidi talked to us earlier about um, her plan being on, like, legendary humans with right. good removal. So uh, the rest of the board doesn't necessarily know it, but, uh, you know, Solitude may not be in her plans. Right. Jason doesn't really have enough white, to make, white solitude, to make that work. It might just go undrafted. It might. And, you know, that's... And, and there's not really anyone here for Fury either, right? So yeah. I've, I've noted that Mason has Trop and Pull. So, uh, but Unholy Heat's an interesting pickup. That that signals something. Uh, Toxic Deluge, the best sweeper in the format. Um, goes to Mike. It, I, that's, <laughs> that's accurate. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know that it's particularly close. Uh, Ooh, I do like his Kess there, right? Like, Kess is one that I don't know if anyone else has taken. He can probably float it late, but it is a powerful, powerful engine that, uh, <laughs> in his deck in particular, yeah. is going to do ridiculous things. Um, Mike was, yeah, Mike is the one who picked up Lightning Bolt. All right, and there's our blue red. We got Spire Bluff Canal. So... Oh, Pyroblast, nice. We, we've not, have we seen REB yet? Did I miss REB going? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, so. But yeah, so Mason is not afraid to just ditch no. early plans, and it's one of his greatest strengths uh, as a drafter. He, he has vision. He, he's got such good vision. He does. He, in my opinion, he's also the best player. Yeah, uh, at the table. I'm on a three. Um, I'm on a current three win streak against him, and it feels amazing. That, yeah. like you know, to beat him three in a row. It's right. <laughs> uh, you know, he seems to always beat me here live. The, the I think the three times that he's been here, uh, even when I won, he he has taken me down um, because I am not a particularly good player. Mm-hmm. 
as uh, I mean, just compared to <laughs> compared to the people who come here to play, I I don't get enough reps in and I get bored. <laughs> Mason is the exact opposite. He is very very on top of it. As soon as he's made a mistake, which is very rare, he is quick to identify it, um, and it and yeah, so is quick. Jason tries to grab Sisher, which he mentioned, and it's gone. Uh, I like an offer you can't refuse out of Jeff. We, this was the one that came up in our preview show. Yeah. Um, I I don't know if in this draft I like it better than Swan Song. Uh, I mean, so the thing about an offer is it hits more than Swan Song, but you're giving people. It depends on where you want it. An offer is really good at protecting your combos, um, but you don't want to cast it early and ramp someone into something ridiculous. I would, I would take Swan Song. 99 times out of 100. Well, Swan Song just went, by yeah. the way, to, to max following. Yeah. It's like, okay, an offer's going. No, now Swan Song's going. Uh, Swan Song, though, is only enchantment, sorceries, and enchant, or enchantment, sorceries, and instants, right? Uh, it, it's not. Artifacts, too, I think. Let's check it. I think it hits artifacts as well. I think it's okay. artifacts, instants, enchantments, sorceries. But, uh, enchantment. No, not artifacts, just enchantment, instant sorcery. So, yeah, Swan Song is much more limited. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it does very much seem like Darien is building uh, legacy lands. The uh, the issue with legacy lands is that almost all of the cards are four ofs. And yeah. I, I think at some point Darien will recognize that uh, the lack of redundancy is, is really painful, yeah. which is why the best, I, in my estimation, the best possible card he could pick at this point would be Hex Drinker. Yeah, he- again, Hex Drinker up there. I agree with you. Hex Drinker is up there. One of those. Um, again, Brandon and I have a lot of these under our belt because of the online ones. So we see, we typically see things, and we also see things very similarly. We have very uh, similar type of predilections. His a little crazier than mine sometimes. Uh, uh, but Hex Drinker, absolutely a card that is just, would go amazing in Jason's deck, Mike's deck, or Darren's deck. Um, like in Mike's deck, actually, I think it would be back breaking. I think it would push Mike's deck to one of my favorite decks. Mike, Mike Viviano. He is he running green? Uh, I thought he no no he's just trying he's Grixis. Well, oh, he had Dark, Death Rider early, so I was thinking green. But gotcha. Never mind. Gotcha. You're right. Uh, no, I mean like that's exactly what you want in a deck like Jason. Like like Mike like being on the play from right. a deck like Mike's. If there was great like you know more green sources there. That's exactly what you want because yeah. you're just. I'll go. I, I'll, I like you're dra- Has he taken uh, Colgan's command yet? Uh, no, Colgan's command is not gone yet. Okay, so that's that is a card that you. Like, you, command you, you showed you show me Mike's deck after this is all done. Mm-hmm. Whether or not Colgan's command is physically in that deck, I will just assume yeah. that it is. Colgan's command is secret one of the best cards in the format. Yeah. Like I get blown out by that card or blow people out with that card all the time. Like, yeah. and I know Jaster Rogue will agree. Like, if he, I don't know, he's playing, he's playing some crazy uh, pioneer crap today. So, uh, I, <laughs> a bunch of singleton stuff, winning with nickel boluses. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me. I love. I, 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 do, like, I, I, I hate the the background color on. Yeah, this I, chat. I, I lost so, the chat extra chat. Fal, fal, Falgums. Uh, I apologize because I I can't. Hey read Mark, it, but, can you uh, visit us for a second? Yeah, I have a tech issue that I don't know what to do with. Uh, uh, I love Heidi's draft here in the middle right now, by the way. So she got the good stuff she wants, like Torak and Combo, and then she's like, cool, I'm going to grab REB, and I'm going to grab Pyro. I'm going to protect myself, like, and I'm going to take those away from people. I am going to snag that hey, away we, from um, snag a w I, killed, from Mason. I killed the extra white chat over here the, the earlier. I dropped it down into the bar because, and I cannot find it to bring it back. I'll get it up. Okay. Uh, so, all right. You take that for a second. I gotta fix these. For sure. Uh, so, yeah. Um, you know, we talked earlier about Heidi uh, it looking, oh, and there, look, okay. looking like she was going to. Ledger Shredder goes. Ledger Shredder. And, so, and Shredder. someone says out there, there it goes. And that's perfect for that deck. I am embarrassed. I don't know what Ledger Shredder does. Oh, my God. As soon as he fixes this. Um, you know. All right, so Ledger Shredder is one of the Luca Pena All-Stars that is... It's, I bought, okay, put it this way. 
I bought all my full foil, full art foil ledger shredders at uh, four bucks, and I sold them all at twenty five bucks. Not what I thought that card was. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it is a blue white blue one one three flyer. Whenever a player cast both players cast a second spell, it gets a connive. So it constantly grows and gives you card advantage. Okay. Okay, I, uh, you know what, this is, this is one of those cards where I, I can see, I can see at the end of the tunnel where, like, this makes a lot of sense, I am not, I don't currently see it, and I recognize it for all of you people out there who are like, are you kidding me? Right. I, sure, but, uh, I can... I can definitely see how this gets big. Well, even that, even if it doesn't get big, it's, it's just drawing and discarding, right? So it plays well right. in a reanimator deck. It plays well in just that kind of tempo card advantage deck. It, it's kind of a Tarmogoyfy type creature. Because I also don't forget, it triggers off them and you. So like, right. if they cast something and then try to bolt it, it's not going to die to the bolt. Right? Uh, yeah. The Phoenix decks run it in Pioneer. Uh, but yeah, it is, it is an all-star, right? Okay. Uh... In my head, I was thinking Codex Shredder, oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, totally different. I, I was totally like, different. all right, I was I was expecting a one or two drop artifact right. kind of thing. All right. uh, okay, so uh, yeah, it looks like we're gonna be bringing Mike in um, on the break on the break. Okay, so we uh, got a little top action here. That's a that's a late top. That's it's a it's an extraordinarily late top. Yeah, I mean, top wins games. I mean, it really does. It's. Is the the irony here is that playing on dis, playing on uh, Discord, uh, I draft top a lot, and every time I do, I hate it because we play on cockatrice, and it's slow and miserable. It is the yeah. worst. There's no good interaction for like the topping wor- the the worst the top three cockatrice cards. things are all things that manipulate your top deck. Oh my yeah. god! Like when well, I had Lindel Sylvan vault, Sylvan Library Lindel's is, vault is the hand down worst. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's uh, you would almost expect it to go higher here uh, than on Discord. Right, but so here's the question then, and Chad can join us on this one a little bit. Uh, where does Merc Tide go? Who takes it out of this? Uh, I, t- t- to me, that seems like another Mason win con. Mason or Mike? Uh, I think, I think Mason wants it more. I think so too. I could see Mike taking it. Uh, either of these would be great places for Merktide or for this baby. Uh, not that, not Forger. Um, Ethereal. Not armor, I don't want ethereal armor, I want ethereal forager. Nope. Ah man, Scryfall is being a bitch today. Oh, this isn't know. this is our Oh. This is our Saint Lotus one. is being a punk today. Yeah, Saint Lotus. Mark, you get it what it do in it. Do do more free work. <laughs> do more free labor, Mark. Mark Mark Caterberg is the absolute backbone of Saint Lotus, right? Like yeah. I'm on the I am on Oh we oh, have maybe. Oh, so it, because we're in an extra room with an extra door, we did not actually carry in the pointer shores this time because it's 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 hard work. So, but this is the box. It is about as big as Brandon's hands. Uh, <laughs> look look at these calloused, beautiful, blistered yeah. hands. And so uh, it is the the largest deliverable pizza they they in, claim in the continental where we live. Yeah. That place. Uh, <laughs> what is? This? All right, we got. What uh, is in letter, letter whoa, 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 whoa! What? What is Jeff doing here? Uh, if, if it's not going to be on, and we'll see. I'm going to do. Oh. Uh, so Jeff like. mentioned an interesting combo to me once, and I want to see that this is not it. Counter target sorcery spell. I think that seems not good. There's a lot of better counters than that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> But it's one mana. I mean, you know, that's not... I mean, I would rather I, have a four spike. Yeah, I think there are things that I would rather have, but I think this was one that, that's good for us to know. Yeah, I, I guess. It's been taken four out of 70 times. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so... Oh, the, and there the birds go for, for Jason, finally. Yeah. So, again, I think that the Arbor Elf earlier was the mistake, and that should have been birds, but he still got it, so who cares? 
Uh, now, can you refresh my memory on City of Solitude? Because I uh, have yeah. it confused in my head with uh, Solitude and with City of Traders. Yeah, and it's City not. of Solitude is a counterspell protection thing. Okay. Right? Um, so City of Solitude is each player can only play spells during their turn. So okay, so this is a this is a green to fairy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That that makes ooh, a lot of sense. Ooh 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 ooh. That's an interesting one. Again, uh, we're seeing a similar effect here. Um, you know, so City of Solitude went. Um, now the question is, would you rather have City, which is harder to remove, or would you rather have one that beats for a two-two? I mean, we we've seen this throughout the entire thing for these two for Darian, which is that Darian is grabbing the creature version, the the creature or the the effect on a stick, uh, whereas Jason is going with uh, the enchantment route. Uh, kind of, I mean, they're, one of them helps you get there. One of them is much harder to remove. Uh, Jason has, uh, Jason has these effects uh, separated so that uh, you're going to have to, at some point, probably decide whether you're going to blow up the questing beast or whether you're going to blow up uh, whether you're going to blow up the Crucible of Worlds, let's uh, say. Mark, we've got another card that needs added to the database in Minsk and Boo, which I cannot pull up off of St. Lotus. Uh, Very cute. So this is an interesting walker. Uh, let me pull it up here. Is this a four drop or a five drop? I can't remember. This is from the new oh, uh, Baldur's Gate. Set, yeah, correct? yeah, yeah. So Fury goes finally. Um, and that's a... I don't know if he has enough of a red to really support, but here's the thing about Fury, is even if he doesn't have enough red to support it as an evoke, he's got enough fast mana to cast it and just beat that, down with that's it. That's true. I mean, he he's still working on pulling together right. uh, uh, the fast mana pieces. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if he ends up getting uh, the noble or ignoble hierarch, uh, but we shall see. Uh, Jeff doing a very Jeff thing over the last uh, two, three rounds. Uh, picking very old cards from uh, his heyday of play. Yeah. Uh, with coveted. Defense Grid, Envelop, and Coveted. Well, Defense Grid is a, is a standard for the for the card deck. Fair right. enough. I just, you know, I, 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 an offer you can't refuse is right. not in that conversation. Defense Grid is still 20-something well, offer you can't refuse old. is really good with, with Karn, though, because you yeah. give them treasures they can't, they can't yeah, do anything. Can't so Coveted Jewel is also interesting here, right? So he's on the same plan here. I don't like this card. It's six mana. It seems bad. But it draws him three cards, and if he has Karn, they don't get to use it when he gives it to them. Right? Yeah. All right, so Minsk and Boo is a four mana, um, red, green, and two. It makes a 1-1 one, one when it comes into play. You can plus one it, put three counters on up to one target creature with trample or haste. Um, minus two, sacrifice a creature and throw it at something. And then if that's the creature as the hamster, you get to draw X cards. Okay. Um, so the Fury, the Solitude going in the same round. Nice. <laughs> They're like, hey, oh yeah, those cards. So yeah, <laughs> Heidi did uh, come around and, the and fire. grab Solitude. Look, so again, when Mason went in on the red, look at this. He's like, fuck this, I'm doing red. Yeah. Canal. Coast reef fire. This is this is how this is how Mason drafts. Yeah, he does it all the time. Yeah, I mean, all right, cool. Um, who I'll get out of here. You're gonna go out, and yeah. I'll talk to Viviano. And all right, Mike, join me over here, my friend. Awesome. All right. So, uh, what do you? How do you feel about your draft, sir? Uh, I I was feeling pretty good. Right until, um, right until like the very end, because I kind of started to run out of cards I wanted to draft. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I was feeling pretty good about it early on, pretty much all throughout. Uh, now it's getting tough because I'm starting to get to the point where I don't have any cards I'm like specifically interested in taking. So I'm just trying to pay attention to what other people are doing and try to draft some. I'll tell you, on the opposite, cards. I thought your draft was pretty bad early on. With a couple cards in particular. Oh yeah, let's talk about it. Like Death Rite, right? Like I think Death Rite's mediocre in this format because there's not a consistent amount of fetches. Like it's okay as a win con to remove instants and sorceries, but I think Death Rite overall is kind of mediocre. Um, and then like Cabal Therapy can be drafted anytime, but like your last since your like Fatal Push, I love your draft. Like, okay. Yeah, like I think your draft's been insane since Fatal Push, and it's become one of my favorite decks. Yeah, thanks. Uh, no, I really appreciate that. Um, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, uh, you know, do a lot of these. I've only done one before. Yeah. I'm not in the Discord, but um, um, it's interesting to, to 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 hear that Death Rate Shaman's not that great. Uh, it definitely. I lost to it the other day because of the removing it, it, the damage aspect. Like, but outside of the damage aspect, like, there's just not enough fetches for it to be a consistent ramp, right? Right, and that makes sense. Uh, I just thought my thinking was everybody's going to be take. There's. I guess it's not as ubiquitous as like legacy. Everybody has fetch lines, so right. I, I, everyone's got multi, Everyone's got twelve fetch lines or more. Yeah, I, I can totally see it. So yeah, yeah. Um, you know, early on, my thinking was just uh, I want to take recall a couple of fetch lands so I can cast all my spells, right. and then Ragavan and Deathrite, or at least in my pick order, very very high. You got a late Ragavan. I mean, Ragavan's been going second round on average. I believe it. At it's this point. it's really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so my plan now is just to try and uh, have some good interaction. Uh, try to draw some good hate cards. Early on, chat commented that you didn't have a lot of interaction, and then, like again, right around the fatal push, you you, it, you really took off here, right? Like, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I'll say uh, as a whole, and this is kind of that question for you, is that uh, I, I think that this tile of kind of tempo-y deck does really well of late. Now, sometimes metas are different and it changes, but uh, what do you see yourself like? What are some picks that we should look for you here coming up? Honestly, I have no idea. Okay. Uh, the only the only thing I really feel I missed out on was uh, Liliana of the Veil. Really wanted that. Somebody snapped that up before I could get to it, and then who got Liliana of the Veil? I didn't see that. One. Uh, it's over. We got uh, last hope. Max. Oh, well, he got both. Of yeah, them. He, he got, got both, both of them. And then um, um, I I just want to make sure I have enough ways to interact with people that are trying to do unfair things. Mm-hmm. Force force them to play fair if I can. Try to play a low resource game. Uh, which is why I kind of wanted Liliana in there, but um, what, what, what else do we got here? I don't know. We it's, got a really late Ledger Shredder. Like, that was the, on our heavy of the cards that are being missed, and uh, yeah. you were able to snag it, it up there. It was it was actually a card I thought about t- taking really early on because it seemed like a good card, and I was like, okay. Um, unholy, some Them taking Unholy Heat really kind of ticked me off a little bit because right. I, I thought nobody was going to take that card and I was going to get it free pretty late um, because my next thinking here is I was going to try to take a uh, Urza's Bobble and maybe a Mishra's Bobble, but just, just a few extra, you know, Delirium cards, get a Dragon's Rage Channeler a little late. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I just want to have, like, really cheap spells. and yeah, I will say Mason yeah. is a master of the audible. Like, he does a lot of these online. Yeah. Like, right there, he saw red was pretty open, and yeah. he was just like, look at that. Like, Unholy Heat, Spirecliff, Stormcarver, Shiv, and Fiery. He's yeah. like, cool, I'm going to go blue-red. Ma- Mason has consistently taken the card I was going to take next right before me. Yeah. So, yeah. like, yeah. the Unholy Heat, I was definitely going to take that right before he took it. Spell Pierce, I was going to take that right before he took it. Or right after. Right, or right, vice right, versa. Right, right in there. You're, you're, um, you're, it was right in the same range, and he grabbed it. Yeah. So, the rest of the draft, I really have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking... I'm just going to try to take a few more cards to, you know, smooth out the deck a little bit and hope for the best. I try okay. to try to cheese people out with some Ragavans, maybe get a Alexandria, try to live the dream with Cabal Therapy, get Probe. Right. Well, I mean, like Dread, Dread, Dread Horde uh, Recall is, is is a sick thing mm-hmm. itself, and, and Dread Horde is, is a vastly underrated VRD card. I, I have, I've been hosed by it many a time. Yeah, it's, I, one of, it's one of my favorite cards of all time, for sure. Um yeah, like I said, I'm just kind of hoping to cheese people out, like him, them, reanimate their big thing. But there's not a lot of creature decks. I'm like, it's weird because there's like three or four decks that are no like hardly any creatures, and then two yeah, like good creature decks. Good. All right, so last question then: uh, What is a card that was taken that has surprised you? Um, there was some weird card that was like I didn't know what it was. Um, lethal scheme. Lethal scheme. Yeah, Lethal Scheme. There was uh, General Kudro. Right, right. So it's behind um, stuff. Yeah, some of that stuff. I was like, what, what is yeah, this? Lethal Scheme's pretty interesting. This was actually on my set preview. Um, oh, Coveted Jewel. That was a weird one. Yeah, that that one's a Karn card. But Lethal Scheme was on my set preview show where I, we talked about it, and I said that this card is a, is a sleeper for this format, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, not, because this I, is one that... No, I, I know that it's like got convoke. convoke. Right, yeah, yeah, that yeah. that looks really... So when I looked it up, I was like, oh, yeah, this is, this is, a, good, this is a good card. Yeah, so... Um, St. Louis does not cooperate all the time. It's fine. Today, I, I know the yeah. card you're talking about. Because it because it's card advantage when you convoke it, right? That's the thing about it is that it's uh, every your, every creature you convoke with gets to connive. Oh, God, that's so sick. Yeah, it's pretty sick. It would have been good in your deck. 
Four, yeah, you can knife four times, you or get a bunch of counters. Two times, three times, whatever, yeah. right? I mean, even twice, right? Like, conniving your death right shaman. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, cool. All right, man. Well, why don't you step out, and why okay. don't you send Dan the man in? Okay. All right, chat. Um, give me some questions that, uh, I mean, it's not card advantage. It's card sorting. Absolutely right. I mean, you're, you're losing, but... It is a styled advantage if I'm getting, especially a later game where I'm getting to discard lands I didn't want to draw um, if I, to not get counters. So it's card filtering, 100%. Uh, Dan's going to come in for a quick one, Mark, and we're going to make it quick, and then we'll get back to the party. Any questions that anyone has for Dan? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put chat back down afterward. Though you all are really well behaved. I appreciate it. You all... Uh, uh, we, we've had more faux pas of mentioning cards from our commentators than we have from you all. So, VRD people, party people. Boom, 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 boom. All righty. Get Dan in here for a quick one. So, yeah, I, I this is an interesting draft. Uh, you know, this is one of the things about the face-to-face -face ones. You know, we mention all the time that it, it's very different. It's very easy to let cards slip. That's how that one time I got that pick, that 30th pick strip mine. Uh, you know, that, that difference between you come in with a strategy versus that difference between you're going to be open and let it see where it flows. Okay, that is a good question. I find it. Thank you. So it actually looks like the draft is picking back up, Dan. Oh, okay, Dan, so we're not going to come in. We're going to pick back up. Um, and yeah, welcome back, Peter. Yep, no problem. All right, so, oh, consider very good there for Dan. Max probably gnashing his teeth a little bit about that one. Um, cause that, that goes much better in Max's deck than his earlier, uh, preordain. It also goes with the mental note. Yeah. No, I mean, they're both really good in Dan's deck. I just think that, like, Max has preordain, and he would much rather have mental note, or he would much rather have consider than preordain in his deck. I, I still don't know what Max is trying to do with the graveyard. He's gonna. I get he's the gonna power. I mean, he's gonna go. He's gonna have a walker. I, I actually like this again. I think if you're gonna go reanimate, you need a, a secondary thing, whether it be aggro or whether it be this kind of walkers thing. But like, a, hey, here's walkers. You got to deal with that. Oh, and yep. then by the way, here is whatever fatty I'm going to to bring back. Right, whether it be. Yeah. Um, you know, the traditionals, uh, like an Iona or a uh, Jenga Taxis or a, a Grizzle Daddy, uh, yep. but also some of the new things like uh, Lord Xander, right? Like mm -hmm. A very good reanimation target. I guess I'm just impatient is really what it's boiling down to. You know, but reanimator, like, you can be patient with. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, and I'm actually impressed with Max is that he is yeah. he's, he's showing that. He got those early things. I thought he was doing Storm for a while. Uh, I think reanimator is better than storm. I, and I think particularly if you have this kind of walkery backup that you've got to deal with, right? Yep. I think the only thing that really kind of Ooh, throws right. us is the pick of soul ring over is it vault. Right. Mason made still on. He's like, Oh, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red. Right. Yep. All right. Generals enforcer. This is another one of these white human, white, black human cards. Um, can't remember which one this one is. Uh, of course, I'm using it makes it harder here. to deal with, and it gives them all indestructible. Okay. Humans, in particular. Okay, yeah, the other one. Uh, yeah. Again, when I use the word generals, it's I think, still like, hey, generous gift. So, yep. Uh, okay, yep. and uh, we, there we see the ballista from Jeff, which plays really well with the kitty and, um, as I said, so with kitty and, and uh, Teferi and through the mana positive rock, you can mm -hmm. draw X amount of cards. Well, yep. I mean. Now, this format's limited because you're probably going to be down to, like, 20, 22 cards in your deck. But even drawing 22 and making 22 mana, you give it 11, 11 Ballista at that point. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, particularly if he has, like, a Dockside and something like that to make it bigger. So it Which adds to yeah. it. Um, you know, the, the issue in this format that I found when I drafted a, a deck that had that combo is that you are limited by your your deck size, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Jason and Darian are still fighting. They are still the fighting. They're just yep. waving at each other. Uh, I elder, elder, I like this. Uh, this is a card that I mentioned long ago as a possible. 
I, what, you know what I like from my Jason? All these cards that I said were possible and Mark poo pooed. Jason's drafting. <laughs> yep. Darian also called out Elder Gargaroth as a later look as a finisher. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, there's so, our Elder Gargaroth, right? I mean, this is yeah. a, it's a high-value finisher. All it's missing is haste, really. Uh, mm -hmm. If this had haste, this would be a VRD staple because haste is one of the secret best abilities in VRD. Oh, absolutely. I think haste is undervalued in most high-power drafts. Okay. The, we had a red-green deck two or three drafts ago. We thought it was going to be eight whackish, and that looked like it had the ability to clean up because so many things had haste or could be given haste. Right. So unmarked grave, that is the entomb for non-legendary. Non yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Unmarked grave is the entomb for non-legendary. Yeah, grab it yeah. here, please. Uh, yeah, so it is a black and one, uh, so it's a little more pricey, but it's an entomb for non-legendaries, which Archon of Cruelty is your your general tar best target for that, right? Yes. I mean, that's your, yep. Uh, Sarah's Emissary, after that, those yeah. are usually the ones you see tied together in modern. Yeah, those yeah. are your powerhouses. So, with Workshop, Metal Worker. I don't know if I like the Workshop in his draft right now, just because Workshop is one of those cards that is either so good or so bad. Um, mm -hmm. You've got to have the right count for it. And I don't yeah. know if he does, but we'll see. I mean, Jeff's got a pretty good head for combo. So, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm curious what the other plan is for all of this mana, because right now. You know, Workshop powers out Metal Worker, which can power out Blight Steel in combination, or Mycosynth, if you want to cast it right that way, without the Tinker. I mean, yeah, Lattice is coming in and out of the board anyway, so... Yeah. Um, so. Hey. so, we have we, or have we not seen a Walking Ballista yet? We just took Jeff we just, just took it this last round. Okay, well, you see, we're, we're on the same page. Yeah, yeah, no joke. Okay. And again, Ballista is actually one that, in the discords, has been regularly in that, like, 5 to 10 spot lately. It's been mm -hmm. the decks that want Ballista want Ballista. I mean, right. Ballista is pretty much is actually one of the, the premier one of the premier commander kill cards at this point. Like it, yep. it, even Makes especially sense. in CEDH, it is yeah. like one of the top dogs. What are you going to do with like, infinite mana? I'm going to cast a Ballista. Yeah, I mean, you can. So, it costs zero. You can you can search it up, and even if it ends up in the yard, then there's ways to. Yeah, yeah. So seeing Metal Worker and walking Ballista. And only having experienced the personality that is Jeff, I have a question for you too, and that is: Is Jeff too classy for Staff of Domination? No, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff ain't too classy for shit. No, like, not at all. Like, okay. If there is a combo to combo, Jeff will do it right. Like, yeah. okay. Jeff is the guy. Uh, me and Jeff playing Commander is hilarious because for a long time Jeff's decks could not be Planeswalkers, and all my Commander decks were all, like a heavy Planeswalker decks. But okay. my favorite was he was. Mind desiring, and just to be a dick, I made him shuffle every time. Oh my! You actually—the <laughs> card this, says it has not yeah. been arrived. And then about, about ten shuffles in, I'm like, okay, I'm bored. You can shortcut now. <laughs> that's uh, some hood rat shit. Hell yeah, it is. Yeah, but that's what Jeff bad. Blyden deserves. <laughs> yeah, it's too bad as judges we only get a name tag and not something with our level on it because you could have just tapped the L two. Oh, he knows. <laughs> he knows. All right, Acid Moss, I guarantee, has not been drafted before. Uh, I'm not going to pull it up because I don't want to type that damn word out. But Acid, I'm more impressed he spelled it correctly. Are you talking about Mwanvuli? Yeah, so yeah. Mwanvuli Acid Moss is two green and two. Um, you get to destroy an artifact or a land? It's a creeping mold. Right, you get an artifact or land, but you get to go get a land out of your deck. Uh, basically Forest land. card. Forest card and put it into so. play tapped. So we have uh, a taiga on the board. Do we have we have a bayou on the board? Right, so we have. I like this one right here. So again, this is a card that's uh, was a legacy big shot. We mentioned this earlier. Hey. Um, it's come up a couple times. I know Cody mm -hmm. drafted it and didn't have great success with it, but I think that Jeff's deck is going to play pretty well with it. Right? It just gets bigger. Uh, that's what this is. It just gets bigger and bigger. Last it's always, hard yeah. to kill. Yeah. Uh, this is that was in one of the lists that I sent you. My, yeah, my very very rough draft of mono blue artifacts. Uh, yeah, a card that actually I think is similar in some ways to a card that you mentioned earlier, Peter, which was in our preview show, which is the new dragon turtle, whatever that thing is called, the one that gets uh, cheaper for all your sorceries and instants in your yard or exile. That has yes. like it has like a giant ward. Like that card yep. is that card was on my preview show and it's good. Uh, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. You mentioned it earlier, I, Peter. I'm looking for it now. I, I played it in uh, Sailor's Bane. It's um, 
Is it? No, Sailor's Bane's the old version, right? Like no, nah, that's a seven seven for nine from Baldur's Gate. Uh, Sailor's possessive. Sailor's possessive. Okay. Uh, Ward four. It costs one colorless less for each card you own in right. exile and or your graveyard that's yep. an instant card a sorcery card or a card that has adventure right the fact that it plays it off graveyard or exile so it, mm. this plays so well with like murktide because you can exile cards with murktide and then it still makes sailor's vein cheaper that's uh yes. that's a that's a saucy number one ball. that's a spicy meatball <laughs> and number two look who just picked Polygon's command yeah. again k command a secret top five or ten card in this format, right. you know. So you two were talking about K-Command previously when I was taking a break, and I am honestly curious if taking K-Command pushes Dreadhorde Arcanist out of this list. No, no. You don't think so? No, no. Even There's with Cass? K-Command with frickin' like a Dreadhorde Arcanist with uh, uh, Ancestral is just, you know, and like Shattering Spree, like he's still got it there. Okay. I wasn't sure if that redundant effect between Kess and Dreadhorde would push one or the other out of the list with K Command. I don't think so. You want both. I mean, because okay. because like Dreadhorde's going to hit your one drops, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not going to hit anything else. I mean, he doesn't have any. He's not playing any pump effects. He doesn't have a lot any connive. But like Dreadhorde with that schemey uh, lethal schemes play so well together, right? Because you can uh, convoke your Dreadhorde and then connive with it and make it bigger, so now it can cast more. But. Uh, but I believe yeah. those is in Heidi's list. Yeah, but I said, but that's over in Heidi's list, right? And oh, okay. Yeah, when yeah, when yeah. I showed that to Mike, he was like, "Oh, that card's that card's good." <laughs> he was like, <laughs> "That's the kind of juicy value that I think really wins matches yeah. uh, in VRD." I would, I would not be surprised to see Mike go five and two. Uh, it's just a very, um, it's a. V- very straightforward, very solid list. Well, it was interesting when we were in the interview. You'll, you're going to like this. He said he was happy with his first part of his draft, but he hated his back half. I told him I was the inverse. I hated his first half of the draft because I hated Cabal Therapy and Death Right Shaman. Right. But I loved like everything since Fatal Push. I loved, and he was like, "Wow, that's really interesting and like really change, you know makes me think." Yeah. I was like, "Everything since Fatal Push. I thought your draft's been phenomenal." Yeah. I was like, "Your first half, I was pretty questionable on." Mm-hmm. It, like. Like we were saying earlier, and I never kind of quite finished the thought about uh, Discord drafts versus oh, there's uh, the hearse, by the way, nice Lotus uh, drafts. Is that um, <laughs> he- 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 this is the second time Heidi has drafted Rick? Heidi likes some humans, okay? Yeah, like Heidi drafted Rick's steadfast leader in one of the Discord presents. Heidi likes some humans, and Rick is powerful. Carl. Is that good? No, I doubt it. I mean, uh, if you've got humans, Rick is pretty powerful. Yeah. It, it's, it seems very much like it. That yeah. seems like if it drops uh, on on turn four and you've got them, that's that's good. Yeah. That's, that seems juicy. Uh, I do like I do like Valky out of Heidi, by the way. Like, Valky is that good, kind of those cards that gives you that early, like, hey, I can disrupt them early or I can just roll your face later, you know? Yeah. I rolled your face with with the flip side of Valky once. <laughs> you certainly did. Yeah. Uh, would you mind twist me with my own mind twist for like six? Something like that. It yeah. was not fun. Uh, Do we want Vile in Heidi's list? Yeah, she wants Vile. She should 100% grab Vile. It's, she took it like 20 picks ago. Oh, she did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. We just missed it. <laughs> yeah. It was like. It was, it's so straightforward. Like, the list is just so good. I yeah. think I think she picked up Vile like round nine or 10. Yeah. Okay. Yep, she did. Exactly 10. 10. There we go. Good call. Um, oh, let me roll, roll back down. Uh, cool. So, um, hey, uh, Tal- real quick, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. You go. You finish. No, you finish. All right. Talisman. Uh, we have two this time. I have been on, so I went, I went back and rewatched some of our old VRDs, right? And I watched VRD two, And I, I had some talismans and some signets in that one. And I noticed how smooth they made my play. I think for a long time, talismans and signets have fallen out of favor. And I think that's a mistake. Like, I had a three color deck that had some rough mana requirements and I almost never stumbled on mana because I had talismans and signets. I like that both Jeff and Dan who are experienced VRD people here. Yeah. I like that they're both nabbing them because it highlights that like there, there is this shift back to like, you know what? Maybe these cards, you know, maybe not doing something on turn two and dropping a talisman is okay because it's going to smooth out my mana and it's going to give me that extra big turn three or four. Right? Yeah. Um, it's, so those are cards that 
if you've played Magic the Gathering Online's cube, you know that they go very quickly because they're mana rocks, they accelerate you, um, they fix your colors, uh, and although VRD gives you access to everything and there are you know better options out there, there's a very decided window where those better options run out, and that doesn't mean that the Signets and the Talismans shouldn't get picked, uh, especially if you're playing uh, a multicolored deck with Eldrazi in it, like the Reality Smasher uh, Thought Not Seer. Um, right. The the Talismans are particularly good, and uh, oh, there, there's the, there's the dragon. Royal Gorger Dragon. Okay. Uh, we'll see how... How's he going to get the dub? Though? Yeah. How's he going to win? Is uh, it a bitter ordeal? Is it a uh, uh, perfora? <laughs> piranha, piranha Marsh. So uh, when it number. comes to continue to talk about the talisman, do you think the value of a talisman goes up the slower the draft format is? A little bit, yeah, for sure. Like in, in a pure aggro and like a heavy, heavy aggro, it goes down. But I don't think it goes down that much. I, th- right? I think because there's all it, s- it speeds you into your sweeper one quicker. I think there's also a difference between a cube where there is not a guaranteed ability to select your cards. There's not perfect card selection uh, versus, you know, VRD where you have the entire bounty of magic available to you. Um, you know, they are there. There's very little downside ever to picking a talisman or a Sigma in a cube. All right. Let's, uh, do, let's do some maintenance here real quick. Thrifty Senpai. Hey, Thrifty. What's up? Welcome back, buddy. And then Wizbright, you had a good question about Tamishi. Um, Tamishi's been drafted one of seven possible. Uh, I expect this card to go up in interesting ways. Um, like, I had a, an interesting one in just Historic Brawl where I took infinite turns because I kept bouncing Mystic Sanctuary to my hand and then uh, replaying time, time Warp over and over. In a format with Time Walk over Time Warp, that becomes a lot better, right? Like, Tamishi Mystic Sanctuary Time Walk is pretty insane. Uh, is this a card that one of uh, our drafters picked? It's been no. Someone mentioned it as a possibility, so I was just you know, gotcha. commenting. Uh, and then real quick before you go back on just our maintenance here, uh, Adeline has been uh, so th- again. This was one Heidi picked in one of the VRD presents, and then I took and, it in Blue yeah. White Humans, and it was bonkers. Yeah, I'm really glad I stole it from you and beat yeah, you with it. Yeah, like that card is insane. Um, it's very good. Yeah, like it's so good. I've got a green white humans list that I've been tinkering with. It's really fast. It's not as disruptive as the blue white humans because right. it, it loses meddling mage and scheming fence and things, but it's so fast. And again, Adeline is r- ridiculous there. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Wizbright, uh, if you type, uh, it looks like a thrifty senpai, senpai did it uh, for you. But if you go check out, check, I can't talk. Uh, check out uh, the spreadsheet right there. You'll see the full draft list. Uh, Jeff is, you know, firmly in Jeskai, um, Jeskai artifacts. Uh, but yeah, his second pick was Teferi. Um, and it, 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 Should go with the kitty. He's got the display yeah, kitty. It, it seems very unlikely that he would uh, not uh, utilize all the colors that he's drafted. And to me, especially and, for some. And to me, she's good in that. So to me, she's a good possibility. I yeah. mean, just because I mean that's what she does. Right? She does and it well. It's a very Jeff card. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Ooh, twin out. And there, okay. So, Ma- that was what I was going to talk about. Mason is an advocate for twin is the best best combo in, like, modern drafts, right? Because sure. it's banned. But Mason's an advocate for twin, a big advocate. So, that is not a surprising move. If you know Mason, and I know Mason, right? Yeah, it's not surprising at all for me. Because in the kitchen, he told me that's what he was going to do. Well, there we go. Uh, so, we talked about it. And, uh, you know, Mason is always underplaying quality of his draft saying like, right. yeah you know i think it, i think it's all right it's like yeah of yeah, course sh- shut, shut up man. <laughs> shut up uh it's uh, i also like this baleful strix i love that baleful strix. uh it's a very good reanimate target i don't like that negate pick uh no i, don't, eh, it's, I mean it's fine oh. i don't have a has date days as well yeah days okay. days went to mason oh, okay. in around 17 or something and there's the snuff out mike said uh yep. you know underrated card with snuff out yeah uh okay so uh, you just you have to have a swamp and pay for life to snuff out. Yeah, I think, I think so. Right, but yeah. I think it's a it's one of those uh, terror cards where it's non black non artifact. Right. Um. Uh, let's see. Snuff out has been drafted fifteen of seventy. You have to have a swamp, pay for life, and then destroy non black. No, just non black. Yeah. can. Okay. So really good. The fact the yeah the fact that you can actually hit artifact Art, yeah, creatures with really it is, good. Is, in this draft. is really important. Um. 
Because no one else has black creatures. Correct. So, Except for Dr. Boyd Walker. Uh, that was the other thing I was going to finish up talking about with Mike, is that uh, he is one of those people you can almost kind of tell based on the picks that he makes uh, and the, you know, the order that they go in, the round that they're taken in, that uh, he doesn't participate in the Discord because he didn't, he didn't have that address until today. We g- we gave it to him. He doesn't know. Yeah. But yeah, so um, you know stuff like Cobalt Therapy going as as early as it did, uh, and some of the you know uh, odd round kind of the odd pickups given the round that they're in. Um, but he's, as you can tell, a very confident, very good I mean, drafter. He, he, he's a local, like, hard, he's one of our best local players, right? Like, Absolutely. I mean, and the man is a limited fiend. I've accused him of cheating in limited at least twice. Not because he actually cheats, because I got my ass kicked so hard that I felt I needed Yeah. To. No, Mike, uh, Mike's a very good long, long-standing player. Uh, Killian Ink Duelist is an interesting one, right? Like, honestly, a 2-2 minutes lifeline is just pretty solid. Uh, and then it's your target or creature for the spell uh, that you know, but that also it's any creature. Uh, it's not you control, so that makes her vindicate cost one less, um, et cetera, et cetera. Right. See that to me that uh, makes it, her, okay. So spells. So it the, makes all, all those enchantments scheme. that exile, they're not targeting until they etb. Right. So yeah, they don't. Okay. But it makes her lethal scheme cost yeah two less which then makes it easier to convoke it can invoke and get two two knives off of it right but and even then, just a two two minutes life link not bad wait a minute does then damn uh, only cost no because damn does not target on the four minute card it's too black on the it's too black to target to it, target a creature it's a two white and two to destroy everything it doesn't target at that point the spell the spell has to target a creature. Okay. Yeah. I I, mo- I, I get it. Right. I, the the just the way the way it's worded right. made me think okay. that like that spell does target a creature. It's just not right. <laughs> okay. Sylvian safekeeper. Sylvian safekeeper. Uh, classic. Just kind of protect your stuff piece. Right. Sack of land. Give a creature shroud. What do you think about that one, Peter? So we're looking at. Jason's deck, Sylvan's Safekeeper is kind of interesting. I'm, I would have expected it a Darien more than Jason. I mean, protecting a Fury or a Mangavore can be pretty good. I mean, he's got the stuff that Questing Beast. I actually think I like this pick. Do you mind if we pull up Magnavore slash Terravore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, both it's Magnavore right. is sorceries, I believe. Terravore is lands, and I I agree because that's how you want to get the game over with. And Darien's relying on Field of the Dead. Jason just has so many threats. I don't know if you need Sylvan Safekeeper. I don't like Magnavore in this deck, to be honest. Like, no. that's a bad pick. Um, it has haste. It does have haste. That makes it better. I mean, but even then, like, it, how many times... If you're casting it on curves, how often is it actually going to be relevant? Oh, yeah. I'd actually say probably more often than not be a 0-0 zero, zero right. on this, curve. That, uh, this deck uh, that Jason's playing, I would love to have him get rid of that uh that magnivore and draft the new dragon from uh dominaria Unlo- it's not United. it's not available yet oh um never mind yeah. i mean actually he could draft it uh miss cutter hydra is the exact same card yeah. but without flying right yeah and it has pro blue so it actually is pretty decent terrible yeah. is good for that me. yeah that was a, a discussion yeah. we we're having in the discord a very brief discussion where it's like is protection from blue or flying better evasion in this format i like the murderous rider and that goes to max, max. Right. okay max. i'm gonna step out for a few y'all yeah uh so the the card that i think mason should draft and i will wait until the door is closed uh, that makes perfect sense for what he's doing is Blood Moon. I was wondering if we would see Blood Moon. All of his non-basic lands, except for Mystic, uh, the wait, the one that pairs with Cryptic Command. Did he draft that? Uh, Mystic, Mystic Sanctuary. Sanctuary. Sorry. Is it Mystic Sanctuary? Yeah. Maybe. I know what you mean. The one that resets right. cryptic to the top and creates the loop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we've seen that come out yet. No. Huh. Interesting. Well, the only uh, non-basics that I'm aware of that Mason has 
are those cards that provide red mana for him and are the splash for that. So yes, it, he is perfectly uh, set up to just wreck Jason and Darian the shop uh, with one card that also helps him in a lot of other matchups too. So mm-hmm. uh, would love to see that from him. Would love to see just a solid nobody gets to play magic <laughs> blood moon on camera. It's really riveting, <laughs> <laughs> really riveting gameplay there. Oh yeah, but absolutely. Now, I, uh, yeah, kind of filling out uh, that Splinter Twin combo. Uh-huh. Um, I, I don't know if we'll see a Kiki Jiki from him. It's possible, but uh, mm. I think Mystic Com. No, okay. uh, Kiki Jiki would be better if there were more targets. You have Snapcaster Mage, Brazen Borrower as the non-legendary options. Yeah. I think so you're... four. Yeah. I think you're uh, right. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Does that have the legendary? It's a good question. Pause on the backside. Yeah, yes, hy- it hyphenated. I, I think. Uh, I don't think the trap and the breeding pool are going to make it into the main deck. Uh, I, so I did talk to him earlier, and he said that his plan with that, uh, because he was just keeping his eye open on what the end game finisher plan was. Yep. Uh, and he was talking about going Uro um, and kind of yeah, like Uro is one of those perfect cards for that purpose uh, because if it gets disrupted or killed escape is a great mechanic for, um, for a deck like Mason's that has so many counter spells. It's like, all right, that's fine. Yep. I'll, I'll so- let you go a card down and I'll get on board eventually. Yeah, I think we're just missing the ability to continue to replay Uro. But that said, Bounding Crisis is still a Splinter Twin target, and that is Simic. It's from Origins. It's a 3-3. Okay. So there is a world where Breeding Pool stays in the list, but I don't... I, yeah. one, one combo piece is not good enough to necessitate the pool. Agreed. Uh, I don't know if Ancient Tomb has been drafted. Can anybody... Uh... In this draft, I don't think so. Yeah. So the other surprising thing, other than you know me sitting here like, why won't any of you take Hex Drinker? Uh, is that uh, the Eldrazi archetype, which has gone fairly early mm-hmm. uh, in the Discord drafts, um, has been kind of getting. You just control F. No, I'm gonna try to look. I'm trying to scroll down, but we're down at the bottom. And it won't. Oh, uh, here. Oh, there's Kiki Cheeky. All right. Mm. All right, did that help us? Uh, Not quite. Yeah. There you go. Okay. okay. All right, yeah. So Kiki Cheeky did come out. Um, you know, Mason's very economical, obviously, with uh, his main board selections. And, you know, he's yeah. like, here's my 16 cards. And then, like, how do I round out the last seven? So. Uh, he's got, looks like four of them right there. Uh, there's to, to there's also finish the out the game. To take zealous conscripts. Yeah, although yeah, zealous, zealous conscripts. Yeah, with just with zealous conscripts works with just um, Splinter Twin, right? And on top is Kiki. It gets any permanent. But it doesn't work with Pestermite and Deceiver Exarch. No, that is correct. Right. It only works with Splutter Twin or Kiki Jiki. It yeah. does not work with the others. So uh, a replacement Pestermite, Deceiver Exarch. And if you're not mm-hmm. flashing it in and if it doesn't cost three, uh, you know, your your other option there that fits in the, the list is uh, Corridor Monitor. And instead of getting flash, you're getting it at two. Oh, okay, um, yeah. But... Uh, e- yeah, I think uh, taking up four spots, especially with all of these counter spells that he has, uh, and you know, just the ability to control the board, get out a get out a Jace, get out whatever else. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that he necessarily wants to spend any more picks going in on this combo. We might see a zealous conscripts just because it is a very uh, yeah, it's a very good value pick. Um, it just helps you win games. Yep. Um, I think 
if we're if we are Mason, we're happy where we are with is it. The only way we would change is if we were able to be just guy because we took to ferry three up top, and that gives us restoration angel as part of the combo. Yeah, I think that's the only way we play a deck that is not is it right now. I, otherwise, yeah, super economical. This deck is looks really streamlined to play a nice tempo combo game like Splinter Twin used to in modern. Yeah. Okay, so we're kind of coming down to the end of it here. A lot of these pick there's. Of course, going to be spicy picks at the very end, and uh, mm-hmm. I'll get the I'll get the sheet set up so that we can see the bottom there. Um, Archon of Cruelty and Iona from Max, though Iona's legendary, so it doesn't get picked up by Unmarked Grave, so that's kind of a a thing. But Unmarked Grave does get Dragon, uh-huh. um, as promised. Burning of Shinyi by Jason. Oh, okay. So it's just not even letting me see the bottom of this spreadsheet. Heidi, Elite Spellbinder. It looks like Mason is looking for a couple more interactive spells, trying to pick up Steel Sabotage, which I believe was taken much earlier in the draft. Jeff? Uh, Jeff, I want to say. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, we're going to see some sideboardy picks. Uh, not terribly exciting. Oh, it was actually Max um, in around 30. Or oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Um, But, oh, Teferi's response. That is that, that is cute, for sure, with uh, two decks uh, running land shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Um, So we've got some, we've got different tiers of, of decks here. Um, and we don't want to disparage any of our drafters uh, who've all done a very good job uh, coming here today, but some of them uh, seem a little bit more cohesive and put together than others. What what are we looking at um, from our eight esteemed drafters? So I think Jason and Heidi have the clearest decks when you read from top to bottom. Yeah. I think Mason's deck becomes very clear when you start reading from the middle. Yeah. And I would say Jeff has a very cohesive list if you can understand the inner machinations of Jeff and what he's no, trying to do. I mean, can anybody truly understand the <laughs> inner machinations? Yeah. I am. I guess Mike is just on a value train, right? Grixis value. Yeah. There's a lot going on here, uh, as it, you guys called it, out, with Dreadhorde, Horde, Arcanist, and Kess. It looks like he's got a lot of two-for-ones. And mm-hmm. and filling it out with some just very good stuff. Yep. Uh, so, I I know what Dan is trying to do, but Dan's direct deck kind of goes in a lot of directions. I'm either unsure of or unhappy about. I don't understand quite all the graveyard play in the deck. Mental note: consider uh, Tome Scour. Yeah. Um, I don't. Aside from Breach Fuel, I get Breach Fuel. Yeah, I do. I, I think that Dan abandoned the best part of the strategy that he's employed for the previous two drafts that he's yes. been here, which was draft the counter stuff early, and mm-hmm. nobody other than Mason was drafting it, and so Mason's list is just fucking stacked, absolutely with, with the best counters and interaction, and so he can Mason gets to just do whatever he wants, mm-hmm. um, you know. I, uh, he's got the, obviously the splinter twin Kiki combo. So I'm interested to see if he's able to win outside of that. Um, Mm -hmm. but, uh, I think Dan would have done really well. Like once you draft hole breacher, um, and time twister, you, you don't need the rest of those cards other than wheel of fortune. Uh, yeah, you, you don't have to be shove on that plan, right? Right. And so taking up like four out of his top of his first 10 picks mm-hmm. with some like pretty dirtily stuff. And, you know, I, I also, you know, he's got LED. And as far as I can tell, he doesn't have Echo of Eons. Uh, I thought I saw. Oh, it's, I'm looking at Echoing Truth. Yeah. And like that's a that's a pretty big uh, mistake. And I, I don't want to shit on Dan. I'm just it's just like going down. The list, it seems like at a bunch of different turns, uh, this didn't need to get committed to that early. And we'll see. Yep. 
and like wheel effects are, are very powerful. And this is not a format where every time you're losing turn one, turn two, turn three, like these games are mm-hmm. a lot grindier than people give them credit for those. <laughs> the times where people win that fast are, you know, much, uh, a few are in far between. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're the flashier ones that make, mm-hmm. make clips, but, uh, yeah. so I, uh, I think that we'll see a lot of very powerful wheel effect wins, um, yep. out of whole breacher, but yeah, it, it makes you, it makes you, uh, slightly concerned that. Yes. So <laughs> that leaves Max and Darian. And I think as far as VRD decks go, I think Max is the one I understand the least and the one i would expect to surprise me the most because there's so much going on here there's a reanimator package there's a planeswalker package and we just got lab men i'll tell you and what, I don't know it's- max's deck has got first timer all over written all over it yeah. and not in a bad way right like these are they're thinking about powerful things they're thinking about the things yep. you can do but they're not always thinking about the total package and the other thing that you'll note that max doesn't have other outside of swan song is still sabotage it doesn't have a lot of sideboard cards Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I, as I said, I, I'm not a fan of Dan's deck because I think this deck is overrated at, at this point. It's kind of that stormy slash wheels, like wheels plus tempo does well, but I just don't think that wheels on its own seems to be good enough. Um, yeah, it's a little unfocused. There are a lot of good cards for a lot of good strategies, but they don't all work together. If you are going to pair it with something, it is Storm. Like, or if Storm yeah. fits in any shell, it is a wheel shell. The yeah. problem we is still... those those cards that make that deck good and effective when it gets to that point uh-huh. uh, preclude you from taking a lot of the very good cards that are going to allow you to establish a presence on turn one and turn two. Yeah, We're still waiting on the wish target from Dan, so I don't want to speak too early about the deck and see how that ends up. Right. right. I, I think it's just going to be... Tendrils. Tendrils yeah. or, or mental mista. Or right. mental... Uh, the the six-mana one that you made, Jeff... Shuffle. Mine's desire. Mine's, Mine's desire. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Heidi's deck, I, I like, but she has too many three drops. Like she, yeah. she doesn't have like she's missing key humans. They might still come, but like um, there's only three picks left. Thalia's lieutenant, right? Like that's one of the. the if you're mm-hmm. drafting humans, Thalia's lieutenant is the be all end all, right? Like that is the bonus yeah. card. Um, but I think she's Char- playing to what she told us, which is legendary humans. Right. Charming Prince, another one, right? Like, oh, that's another um, good one. Yeah. Uh, but like, I think she has to me three drops. I think that's what mm-hmm. she's going to run into. Um, There's also not a whole lot of fixing. Right, right. She's got. Uh, yeah, the singular cavern of soul style effect is kind of surprising. I thought she would have taken the um, the other ones you'd see in humans. Uh, the the... Pil- pillar of Perunes because you're playing a heavy creature deck. Right. And then uh, the the one from Ixalan. Ixalan. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then the one from Conflux. Or yes. Right, sitting right now, um, Agent Ziggurat, yeah. Jeff, Mike, and Mason have the top three decks for me. Right. Um, mm-hmm. um, I, the one deck we haven't talked about in the deck that I put kind of at the bottom is, is Darian's, but because I thought it suffered more from what you said, Stephen, which is first timer syndrome, where this is a constructed deck that relies very heavily, as Brendan pointed out, on the four ofs available to you in Legacy. Right. Well, as I said, Darian's been doing the VRD presents, which are a little less competitive. Uh, he's done very mm-hmm. well with those. Um, but, you know, so I, I, this is a good kind of learning as you move into more focused decks. And I, I think we'll see that. I think there's a lot of powerful stuff there. But overall, I think lands is an amazing backup strategy. Like, I like my strip mine package. I, I like my decks, my strip mine packages with Brandon's style of decks, right? Where you are... You're going to do a strip mine package. You're going to have that powerful landsy thing, but you have something else to go with it. Yep. Um, I think lands by themselves is not a super doesn't doesn't work super well. Yep. It, this yep. reminds me of the time that uh, in a Discord draft. There's the tendrils, by the way. Yeah. Uh, this is, reminds me uh, of the time uh, we can't scroll down. Uh, we can maybe if we add more rules. Uh, I'm gonna, hey Mark, can you come in and give us a hand? Um so uh I got oh the, the, I, just, I had the, a thousand time, rows to do it, but I got it. Land is <laughs> similar to uh fucking a thousand rows. The time <laughs> I'm an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind, Mark. Okay. 
Here we go. Oh, there's the fucking hex drinker. Thank you, God damn. Yeah, no, he took the hex drinker. I, I just, I looked at him. I wow. said, I said, finally, Brandon's gonna shut up. <laughs> uh, I won't ever. I know. <laughs> But uh, I do like the Judith, though. I mean, I, I she has a lot I, of three drops, but Judith I, is good. I, I agree that Judith is good. There's no red mana. Right. Yeah, she's gonna. Have, she oh, has, she has so, a triumph. She's still gonna have mana issues. That, it. I mean, that's not. A, that is just not enough. Right. You can't. You can't run a third color. I mean, the, two lands, and then she needs to run a runner. Runner. She needs four runner lands here at the end. Yeah. So and, she, at thirty one, Heidi took Alesha. Right. By the way. Okay. Right. Yeah. So that. That was the dedication to that third color, but I believe we saw the Mardu Triome. Yeah, she has that. Yeah, yeah. and she's got that in uh, the, the Cavern of Souls. I like the snap out of Dan, by the way. I missed that one. I... <laughs> oh, Mike, Mike grabbing the Death Shadow that he mentioned earlier. Death Shadow, boom, 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 D, shutting, shut up, never happening. Uh, yeah, so, we, yeah, we, we knew that... Uh, Dan uh, had, oh, I had love brain this, freeze. I love the street right here. It was more of like a, uh, what is he getting with Wish, and is it another storm target? Yes. Um, but the, the, the lands topic reminds me of when Enchantress and Boggles, uh, and Boggles were both drafted at the same time. And okay. it's like these are two lists that have just don't get played. And they require the same cards, essentially. You know, 10 out of those... Oh, there's 20... the Uro. He is going to go bug in there, or rug at least. There's the Uro. So we mentioned that earlier. Good good yeah. call, whoever called the Uro. Um, I'm, he just told me. So okay. it's less of a... Well, yeah, but someone I... called it well before that. Like, someone, oh, like oh, in, in, chat, in, in chat. pack one, someone in chat called it. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes perfect right. sense. Uh, but, like, yeah, if lands... Golos. Man. If, if lands cannibalizes another version of lands... Some of those cards aren't replaceable. And it was very surprising to me that Jason said out there that he didn't really care about crop rotation. And I'm like, that's a, mis that's a mistake. That's just, if you're going to play a land style deck, uh, that just, that's another, it's just one mana you you win this turn. You draw, you drew your win con. So you, you want crop rotation. Yeah, I like the bead. Um, and especially if like you're keeping yourself open to so the So is, is Max's Green Splash just Deed and Oko? Max's Green Splash. Are they just Ma Mason's Oko? Green Splash? No, Max. No, Max. Because oh. he just took Deed, and he took Oko and like pick four. So I think it's Green Splash. Yeah. Oh, I, I was thinking of Uro. I don't like that they cost this, that they have the yeah. same mana cost and one's Oko and one's Uro. Uh, we got, so we got Snow Cover uh, popping in uh, that's going to play into his uh, Field of the Dead plan. Yep, which we knew was going to happen. Right. Uh, for Max's Splash, Max does have the Bayou, Verdant Catacombs, and Bloodstained Mire. Okay, so, so it's not we, entirely off the table. So our, or just so you know, everyone knows, our rule for Snow Covered is that you draft one, you get up to 25. Oh, I thought it was 20. Yeah, it was 25. Okay. So, I mean, it's it's a relevant difference, but yeah. we didn't yeah. uncap it unlimited because we didn't we didn't want to like play into like the, you know, total anti-mill fuck you plan, but... Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, so, Darian, going with snow-covered mountain and snow-covered forest, why? Uh, his Field of the Dead. What? Oh, different names? Different names. And gotcha. Also, uh, there's a Valakut at uh, 28, which is kind of why I, I thought we might see a scape shift right. as well. It's possible. So... Yes, yeah, still. I, like, without commenting too much on what will happen uh, when Darian plays There's a matches. <laughs> I'm sorry, hold on. I love the round 44 plat. It's beautiful. <laughs> this is like, you know what? Round 44 plat. Yeah, okay. Let's do this. Let's, has, let's get it, has, let's Scrub get even, has Scrub been taken? I was just looking for that, and I don't see it. I see Heidi taking Badlands in nine, though. So like, Badlands went, but is she going to just grab plat and Scrub 44, 45? So hell, here's what I have to say. Hell yeah. yeah. Has, did, did Aaron Mason some. go? I assume Aaron Mason. Uh, yes. Mason's gone. Okay, okay. That um, is part of Mike's. Mike has four fetch lands. Right. Mike has got Delta, a lot. Yeah. Delta, Tarn, Flats, Wait, and Mike, Mesa. Mike needs. Did that. Vista go? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Like I think Heidi has it. Okay. Good. Okay. Because I mean, Vista's the best fetch land in the format. So. Yeah. No. Uh. Uh. What's uh, Darian? Oh no! Sorry, Darian has it. Yeah, Darian okay. got it round five. I okay. Think. Um, oh, and the, ooh, that's such a late Merc tide. I love it. There's some saucy lightness coming. This yeah. Time. So Mike and Mike and Mason were the two that could really get a lot of value out of a out of a Merc tide. Yeah, they could also get value out of an Ethereal Forager, though it's a little more expensive. Yeah. But. 
Um, so, God, I love that. You, you know that Jason is going to have some very spicy end of the draft thing. What do we? We basically got two picks. I know what Jason's spicy the draft thing is. It's funny. Yeah. It's not spicy. Yeah. <laughs> is it upheaval? Uh, no, it, it involves my shirt. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it involves my shirt that someone can't see. Hold on. I'll, yeah. put on. I'll put on something else that involves. One second. Plow under. That's what I was thinking. No, I would almost draft Plow under because I'm a big fan of Plow under. It's in the top five cards ever for me. But uh, Okay, we got Disrupt from Dan. Mm-hmm. All right. His, Mi- uh, that's, that is a late miscast as well. His last pick involves wow. my hat. <laughs> My hat says bleed out if you don't know what it says. <laughs> bleed out and mountain goats. Yes, there you go. Bleed out and mountain goats. Bleed out is a song by the mountain goats. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Drift of Phantasms is another, that's another um, one of those go search your card deck cards, right? Yeah. Okay. So Mike, Mike dropping a Sorcerer's Spyglass. Surprising uh, it hasn't gone earlier. It seems like something Jeff would have really liked. Yeah, because uh, Needle went to Darien. And someone else took Revoker. I think Mike took Revoker. Yeah. Broker's a good tempo card. That's just good there. Yes. Um, you know, the thing I'm really seeing in this, folks, for, for both of you and get your thoughts, is, I mean, there was a little run on sideboard cards early, but I feel like everyone yeah. kind of ignored sideboard. They really did. I feel like everyone I think like everyone has too many main deck cards. Well, that's, yeah. Uh, yes. I, yeah. I think that that is absolutely true across the board. I do not see a single deck here that is, like, tight. Right. Uh, Which is surprising out of Mason. Uh, I mean, you know, it's it's one of the byproducts of pivoting or like staying open late. Is right. like you all right, uh, I'm just I'm gonna draft another spell pierce or whatever. There was a little run in the middle where there was some night like uh, yeah, there, some there's, it's kind of like okay, now we're we're really but I mean overdoing and it. I know Caterberg is gonna ooh rings that's a weird one like I would yeah. rather see uh, staff there. Um, I know Mark's going to love hearing this because, you know, this is when him, like this deck that we're missing a tsunami, we're missing really a tsunami <laughs> or a life force or a choke or, a, you know, oh, glue, yeah. like any of the, co- we're not seeing any of the color hosers and with a mostly blue deck, like that is like choke or tsunami would be just backbreaking, assuming they resolve, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mason. I, I would I would love to see his last pick. It was going to be a pride. It was going to be an ether flash, and then he said, "No, no, no, it's going to be a pride mage," which is probably a better pick because I don't oh, think he has a lot yeah. of outside of like I, acidic slime. He doesn't have a lot of artifact hate. No. So Mason took Uro in forty three, which is something we talked about earlier. Coming in off of the the breeding pool, and and the uh, drop. He's got two. And the drop. Okay. We also talked about and what about growth. <laughs> I didn't see the growth. Okay. I didn't see it either. I. I'm still curious if Bounding Crisis is even uh, in could, his list. It, uh, it was in, I know he mentioned it online in a, a chat the other day. Um, okay. sp- speaking of Grove, because Mason also has the blue-red one, I'm really surprised Fire. that either Jason or Darian hasn't picked Horizon Canopy yet. Uh, yeah. So this is something Brendan and I talked about uh, while you were off, uh, Mike, was Dar- it seems like there might be an, an inability for Darian to really cycle up the canopy lands with only ramming up excavator right. and fast bond having Ren and six with which Jason took would allow for that. And it seems like Jason, because they the, Jason, split should, Jason Prince, should have taken it like, yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. or more of them in general. And it seems like because <sighs> they kind of split the goalposts on these pieces, it's very hard for them to get maximum value from the canopy you know, lands. You know what constant missiles is to or Colossus. Good Isn't game. that the fog with yeah. buyback? Yeah. Constant mist gets loses to questing beast. Uh, but I do love the Portcullis pick. Uh, like Portcullis is a shitty card, but I love it. It's hilarious. What and, does it do? Um, so basically, it it's stops, it's like a bad ensnaring bridge, right? No, it stops creatures from coming to play, right? Like uh, port. Uh, oh, you basically exile it under Portcullis yeah. or yeah. Portcullis so, until Portcullis leaves play. So you get it aside. I, I think it's just Portcullis, not Port. Port okay. Colors, yeah. Okay. Uh, you get to decide, like, what cards... Uh... Am I on the other side of the sea? Okay. If there are two or more other creatures in play, set that creature aside. Yeah. So it is four mana, which is... This is the downfall of the card. If it was, like, two or three mana, this card would be playable. Um, mm-hmm. But you... If there, as long as there are two creatures in play, anything that comes in goes under Port Colors, right? Yep. So it's interesting for your own stuff because you get the comes into play effects, and then you can move it to the side. 
Yeah. Um, but it's four mana, and it's n- not good because of that. But, like, in yeah. the heavy comes into play deck. Uh, so there are basically better cards for this effect that he wants to stop other people with lots of creatures. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, in the right deck, if this was cheaper, this is playable. This is a close. Um, yeah. So, Jason, for his last pick, he's going to have me say something about the be- des- damn the best ever death metal band out of Ditton, which is, uh, you know, he and I's uh, call sign when we announced together. So, um, Jason, sad- Matt- Jason sadly missed the Mountain Goats concert when he was in, uh, when they were in town, which I went to, I got this hat because he was in Dallas doing like making money or something. I don't know. Yeah, TCG Con. Yeah. Uh, so he is taking, yeah, Mountain Goat. Mountain Goat. Yep. So Max picks up Gristlebrand and Show and Tell. Show and Tell's bad and I, here. I think don't like the Show and Tell. I like the Gristlebrand. Yeah. Well, I still don't know how good Unmar- Unmarked Grave is in this deck. It gets Dragon. It gets Murderous. Uh, it gets dragon. Murderous Archon and Archon of Cruelty. I mean, it, it gets Dragon and Archon. That's that's enough. Yeah. This. Uh, but what does he win with with Dragon? I mean, I don't I don't like the Dragon because I don't see the distinct win. Like, are we missing a? I have I, I have spell. no idea. Oh well, he has Labman. So with Bizarre Dragon and Labman. Okay, that's a convoluted three card that yeah. It just seems... play Bitter Ordeal, man. <laughs> yeah, that and is... Demonic Consultation. Yeah. Yeah, that that seems bad. Wait, wait, did, did Max take Thoracle? No, no. Thoracle went to Dan. Dan has has Thoracle <laughs> itself. Max has Labman and Demonic Consultation. So, see, th- to me, this this draft, um, like, we'll see when the games get played what what happens. But uh, it feels like it was very myopic. So we had, people had their head down in the lane that they started yep. in, and uh, over committed to the sub subpar substandard cards for those archetypes because mm-hmm. that was the lane that they were in. No one, and, no, no one audible. No one yeah. audible. Even Mason didn't audible because his plan was to wait to see if he had to audible, and he right. didn't. Uh, so, yeah. uh, and we we finish out with Ravenous Quarter. Trap, uh, Gorilla Shaman, great one. Quarter Cunning's great. Yeah, uh, like I think the the, no, the, long, the longer it went on, the more Mike's draft uh, felt good. Right. Um, yeah. But I I think you know after Mason and Mike. I'll put Jeff and Jason in the same category of old mm-hmm. old heads yeah. <laughs> choosing cards that have strictly better versions of them. Yeah. Uh, but like they're going to play really well and they're going to understand all the lines. I would like to announce that this is the first draft I think that all of the OG duels did not go drafted cuz Scrubland. Oh, it is not even close. Is there, is there we, we've had so right. we've had oh, so right. many drafts okay. where like a Scrubland or a Plateau. No Scrubland, or... no Savannah? No Savannah, no Scrub. And yeah. So. Yeah, so that that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think uh, Jason uh, Jason messed up on the mana base. Yeah, he messed up his mana base bad. Uh, I'm I'll re- call that. I'm really glad that there was a period of time where he took really good win cons. Uh, mm-hmm. The questing beast, uh, hex drinker, hex drinker, stoneforge mystic. Wait, oh, did he not take a fucking culture oh, complete? He's got just lion sash. No. Lion sash. Is he his said own. Um, outside of this that the SFM pick was a mistake. He wish he could get it, it back. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah, you you I, you want to have honestly. In his deck, I think it was. Was just lion set. Yeah. He either needed to have no. more equipment to tutor. Okay. I want or... I want Stoneforge with Caldra in a deck where I feel, feel like okay, counter counter casting Caldra without when Stoneforge gets killed. Doesn't yep. matter. Doesn't matter. You it, does, okay. it it is. It costs two mana. Yeah, no, no. It's you're, and, you're it, not like, right. It's That's so a good dispute, good. right? I, I just but, think he needed more equipment. That's it. Yeah, I he, think S was fine. Is, all right, Chat, who do we want to have in here? I don't know. You, you, we already had you in here. No, no, no. Uh, we went Jeff. Mason. Yeah, we went Jeff, Jeff and Jeff. Jason. Yeah. We went Jeff, Mason, and Heidi. All right. And cool. Max, real quick. All right, I'm going to step out and let these guys get the All right, we'll, we'll, we'll swap one. Yeah, we'll, swap. we'll do two, two. Okay, we'll do two, two. Yep. All right. All right, keep these kind of short and sweet. Cool. So they can All right, Mason, short and sweet. That's it. Mm hmm. I think your draft went well. Uh, I'm. Yeah, it, it did go well. I mean, obviously, it's basically the same draft that I had uh, last time outside of uh, the way that I actually plan on winning the game. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, win cons are important, but uh, if you prevent your opponent from ever getting to theirs and then you have a couple of them, then you'll be fine. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. I actually think this draft, so this draft, unlike a lot of the recent ones, I think has drifted really far toward the combo side of things. Correct. Which certainly makes me uncomfortable because when you have to cover Field of the Dead and Merc Tide Regent and Underworld Breach, it's a complicated web. Yeah, it seems like everybody kind of dropped uh, land support and sideboard for the sweet tech of having 33 mainboard cards. <laughs> um, it's possible. I know a lot of people were focusing on a lot of, like, I mean, people were hitting the broad strokes, right? Artifact hate, graveyard hate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, I probably have maybe I think I counted. I have one too many main board cards because for some reason I forgot that I drafted Jace. The mind sculptor. That's, so. that's, it's pretty tragic. I don't know if you're going to be able to bounce back from uh, from that. You know, some people would play sixteen lands in that situation and tell themselves like, "Oh, I've got a mana crypt. I can only play sixteen. I can just play sixteen lands." Um, but I'm a real disciplined Magic player, and I want to play Very. seventeen lands and my mana crypt because I want to win the game wow i know thank it's you it's brave pixel crimes live gonna drive eight minutes to watch me win games i appreciate that thank Hell you yeah thank you for that i need the i need the support these guys are animals out here fucking ruthless nobody likes me it's all <laughs> very discriminatory absolutely brutal out there my god pure brutality um mm -hmm. so one card that i w i was like i didn't tell you in the kitchen but i was mm -hmm. i really wanted mm -hmm. you to draft because i thought it'd be perfect was blood moon I, I really thought about drafting Blood Moon. Well, up until the very end, I thought about drafting Blood Moon. What kind of hampered me was those early blue-green land picks, uh -huh. um, and it probably scared me away from drafting Blood Moon because I knew at that point I was at least looking to splash Ancient Grudge off the board, and I was interested in Uro after some of the people in the last 10 picks or so decided to draft some more sort of mid rangey cards, uh -huh. and I thought Uro, I could get some mileage out of Uro on my sideboard. So... Oh, it's Eric. Hey, Eric, what up, my man? Yeah. All right. Thank God I needed to judge earlier. There was some collusion happening out there. It was, yeah, collusion. Yeah, yeah, think about that. Outrageous. The, the, what's it called? The corruption of the St. Lotus. Finch the Cabal? Trapped community, all right? All right. I'm out here. I'm calling it like I see it. Well, Thank it's, you very much, it, it's brave for you to stand up like that. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, all right. Before you go, one question. Yeah. Predict your... Match win loss record. Um, let's see. I'm gonna beat him, him, her for sure. Him, him. Yeah, so, seven, seven, and seven. Yeah, up. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, easy. Cool. All right, thank you. Cool. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you're up. Peter, what's your take? I'm. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say six and one. I will say that. Jeffington, Yo. bring it on in. What Yo. are you feeling right now? Oh, uh, my deck. Dude, <laughs> how do I do this every single time? Thank you. Yeah. Ah. I don't know. What, what went well, what did not? Um, I tried to do both decks by taking all the lands early. And then Dan took all these things that I needed. He, he, he snipped it from you? Yeah. Oh, rude. Yeah. R rude boys. It's okay, because um, the strategy came together in pack three. Okay. Like, both of the things I wanted to do were very heavy on setup in the beginning and then pack three would just be free picks as no one else is going to be competing. Yeah. Um, okay. So what is making the cut and what is not? Is, are we going to see Teferi in the main deck or did, did no like... Teferi is going to be in the sideboard strictly for Mason. Yeah. Um, it's going to be the only non artifacts are, okay. yeah. are going to be Karn Dak Faden and Emery. Okay. Everything else so, is going to be an artifact. Much more streamlined. We're not going mm -hmm. transmute. We're not. I mean, you guys oh, I'm sorry. Just, I'm sorry. I forgot that I had transmute and, and tinker. tinker. Yeah, yeah, both of those stay. Okay. Yeah, those two um, stay. All right. Well, uh, 
what what is going to win you the most games? Is Copper gonna... Gnomes into Blightsteel Colossus. Okay. Guarantee it. Calling in now. I, what, what's Copper Gnomes? Two mana, one one from Urza Saga. Pay four, sacrifice it, put an artifact from your hand into play. Oh, I feel like I should know that card. <laughs> Anyways. Um, all right. Uh, we're going to wrap it up since we're still getting it. Yeah, you're here. all good, man. But uh, the last question I have for you is for you to predict your win-loss record. I always go 5-2, so I'm going to say 5-2. You heard it here first, 5-2. <laughs> All right, thank you, man. Thanks. And then we are going to, or I'm going to step out as Steven comes Wait, in here sure with Dan. Right. So. I'm saying? Yeah. Nice. You can't take the talent off air. Uh, no one took Bird. Yeah, I absolutely would love Copper Gnomes. And no one took Bird. Jason took Birds of Paradise, if that's what you're referring to. But who cares about that? We've got Dan here with us. Daniel Zielinski. Uh Tell us about your draft. What went right? What did not? Oh, uh, this was one of those uh, magical... Oh, I get to hold it? Yeah, cool. It's one of those magical moments in VRD where you sit down and you're like, oh, but, but what if I get the first pick? I get to do all the stuff that I want to do. <laughs> and then you immediately take that list and throw it in the garbage because you're like, I'm going to be fifth pick and we're just going to go on. Yeah. But then the die rolled happened and uh, I decided to go the VRD six, which was by far the worst showing that I've ever had here. It was just okay. the immediate post COVID hadn't played magic in a year event. Oh, that's the one that I also had a dog shit. Showing. <laughs> yeah. See, I forgot that, uh, <laughs> that what I did there and I forgot that you were there. Oh, yeah. I just blanked it entirely out of <laughs> oh, my memory. Yeah. It was, I was talking as if you'd only, this is your third appearance, but it's your fourth. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm, I, yeah, uh, one VRD two and then had the, right. the, the heartbreak moment in the last VRD. Yeah, that was, Oh man, what a good, Ooh. uh, everybody, you can go check out our YouTube channel, uh, St. Lotus VRD or St. Lotus MTG. Uh, just search both of them, whatever, <laughs> uh, on YouTube. And you can go back, uh, the entire, you know, the draft and the matches are separated out, but, uh, and how do I plan on getting my opponent's poison counters? Um, yeah. okay, guys, I think, I think I may have made a mistake in my drafting picks. I don't, this is, this is news to me. I could have sworn. I didn't, I didn't That's look the at the top half of it. The entire, if, oh my God. If you look oh through God. the rules, you're only allowed to win. <laughs> my opponents by, have infinite life. Yeah. I can only, it, we got nerfed. And so yeah. I can only win by milling my opponents out. <laughs> That's why I love ruin crab and hedron crab mm -hmm. so much. Oh, for sure. Um, so yeah, you, you listen, Happened to me last time. You draft Black Lotus first. You, you're you're so excited. Yeah, all and the then tingles you just happen. Kind of, then you're like, oh, well, now I have to draft the rest of my deck. <laughs> yeah, then you have to pick good cards. Yeah, uh, my I have the uh, the main strategy I, I I normally do is just take good blue cards. Yeah. Um, and I have another fundamental of just take power if it's available to you. Sure. Um. So that's why Time Twister, and once you pick Black Lust Time Twister, I'm just, I'm just all you're, in. You're set up perfectly for a round three hole Breacher. Uh, I very much respect that. Uh, what is your, what, what do you feel is going to be your primary win con? Are we looking at Brain Freeze, or are we looking at Thoracle? I imagine, because Breach Brain Freeze is like, you know, messed up. Yeah. Uh, that'll be, that'll be the easy one, just kind of pop off. Mm -hmm. um, and in chat, the, what I'm planning on casting off Wish uh, one of the main things is, it didn't happen this VRD, but the first time I drafted this deck, John Ryan had Iona. So the idea is you want to have non-blue ways to kill your opponent. So wishing out uh, Tendrils to kill him with treasure, treasure. And also the big mistake that got the most... The, my big mistake last year, last time, which was the uh, the trauma pick, which was uh, Tormod Script, was to play... So I could wish out Tormod Script to get rid of my graveyard to cast uh, Paradigm Shift on Thoracle for when you have five, whatever, basically infinite mana. It, you know what? It was not just a hate on Jeff pick. <laughs> Correct. It looked like it the whole time because I took the LED, he took the displacer, yeah. and then he looked at me and I said, well, LED says I what's looked up. At <laughs> looked at me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Uh, before we uh, send you off, um, I want to get a prediction for your win-loss record. Mm, well... I'm ex uh, I'm looking for the six one because yeah. I don't I don't know the seven zero. But walking in here and saying I'm going to do seven zero and vintage like literally no one has ever gotten a seven zero in one of these. Mm -hmm. uh, so like yeah. power to the people to make it happen for sure. It is, it is a. In, All right, we're gonna have Heidi. So all right, we're good. Yeah, we're, okay, yeah, we're finishing yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, so 
that that's the wish, of course. Mm-hmm. You have it in your deck. Correct. What, for accuracy, it's six and one is what you're saying. Correct. I'm looking for I'm ideal six one second pick one six again. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Thank you, sir. Right. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Uh, and then I think there's still one. Max. Yeah. Okay. Have we talked to Mason yet? Yeah, I talked okay. to him. Yeah. I talked to Mason, Jeff, and... That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, and then I'm finishing off the interview with uh, predicting your oh, okay. wins. Well, what? I'm finishing off the interview okay. with predicting your wins. I'll, yeah. I'll get it from the other Sounds good. Earlier. Okay. I said over here, do I need the headphones? Uh, yeah, you'll need to hear yourself. Okay. All right. I so I am Steven, as most of you know, and this is not Brandon. No. Uh, this is Heidi. This headphone is not turning around. Yeah, they're a little wonky. Uh, try put it like that. There you go. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right. So as we mentioned earlier, right? Like Heidi has come from the VRD presents St. Lotus presents, which are a little more casual in yeah. nature. And, and she said in her earlier interview, she was, uh, you know, in her pre-interview, you know, she talked about that. Uh, so how do you feel about your draft overall here? Uh, I think it went pretty much according to plan. I mean, nobody else was really hitting that. Right. So, uh, but I wasn't expecting to get that plateau so late. I kind of forgot about it and thought somebody had already taken it. And then I was looking through and I'm like, wait, nobody, nobody took this plateau. Right. And so, I noted to you outside that also no one took Scrubland and you missed that one. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and that would have been good, right? I, I, I think that's going to be one of the problems with your deck is the mana base, right? Like yeah. that, that's going to where you're going to hurt. Yeah, uh, absolutely. What? I probably should have uh, been a little bit more serious about taking the, the lands a little bit more early. Right. I was a little focused on the removal, which uh, I guess some people were making some comments towards the end. They're like, nobody has any removal except her. So. Right. You, you have great removal. <laughs> so hey, I'm the, ready the, for The question that. becomes, are there enough creatures that for your removal to matter, right? Like, right. What do you think? Uh, I have some removal that's for non-creature stuff, too. But, okay. yeah, it looks, um, I mean, for things like uh, Blightsteel Colossus, being able to exile that is going to be pretty important. Right. And then I do have Krakus, so anything that's like a legendary Planeswalker, I can just bounce it. Right. Cro- so that well, Krakus can't hit Planeswalkers. It's oh, only creatures. Oh, cre- oh, okay, well, then I'm... But yeah. Crocus is really good for Less yourself good. because yeah. it can defend your own creatures. That's true too. Right, like yeah. that—that that is. So. Yeah, Crocus cannot hit Planeswalker, sadly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I love your Esper Sentinel in the third pick. I think Esper Sentinel is a, is a linchpin of your deck. Right, it, it's so yeah. good. Uh, anything that you like regret taking? Uh, not sure. Yeah, I I'm, I guess that remains to be seen. Okay. I um, I probably should not have taken. Path to Exile because, I mean, honestly, nobody else is really running that many creatures. I mean, I guess Mike is. Mike's got right. some creatures There's that I few. actually are, I am going to care about some well, of those. I will say on the note, so. like, I think Prismatic, um, the the new, the white X removal spell, that went undrafted, oh. right? And that's probably better than Path because it can hit other things too. It can hit any permanent. And then it doesn't give him a land either. And it doesn't give him a land. That so, like, that white removal is so good right now that yeah. it becomes interesting. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. really got to steal with your late Solitude. Solitude's so good. I and couldn't it, believe nobody It just took kept it. going and going and going. Yeah, I was trying to stick with, like, the legendary humans, but I'm like, Solitude just fits so good in here. I need yeah. to do it. I mean, there's... I don't know. It, and there's also the chance that I could potentially, I don't know, like, well, probably not. I'm not going to, um, I'm probably not going to use the Aether Vial to, because the highest I'm going to put Aether Vial to is four. I mean, you've got yes. so many three drops. Yeah, if you go three, above three on Aether yeah, Vial, you, that, I mean, that's the problem. The problem I see with your deck in the long run is you're very thick at the three drop spot. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what, what about Skull Clamp? Do you think that, that should have been one you picked up? I honestly don't even know what that does. So okay. probably, yeah. Right. So Skull Clamp is a, is a one-mana artifact that mm-hmm. you equip it to a creature for one mana, mm-hmm. and it uh, gives them plus one, minus one, oh. but you draw two cards when your creature dies. So like oh. with Bitter Blossom, it's turn your token into two cards, turn your token into two cards, turn your token into two cards. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Well, okay, that would have been good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, if I try this again, All which right. yeah. who knows if I will. Remains to be seen. Right, right, right. I mean, if I can get my uh, the, the general's... Uh, enforcer on the battlefield. All of my legendary humans become indestructible, so right. uh, they can still be exiled. But uh, I think that's gonna. Yeah. Well, and you have like your, your pyro and red. Those were those were great picks. Like you, you 
nailed those. Like those went late, and mm-hmm. you nailed them there. And like I was just like, all right, no one. Once yeah. you took the pyro, I figured Red Old Middle Blast was going off immediately. Oh, Jeff said he wanted it, and then he was like, I didn't think anybody was going to take it this early. He's like, oh man, I'm really thinking about taking uh, Red Old Middle he, Blast. I'm like, don't do it. To those me. were late. Yeah, those, yeah, those they were, were both <laughs> late. And like I, that, you got both was impressive because generally when one goes off the board, the other goes off the board immediately after, right? Yeah. Especially with other people in red. I mean, I probably should have been a little bit higher on the defense grid, too, because honestly, that's going to help me so much right. against the blue decks, too. But I mean, so many of these decks are in blue. Um, but only two of them really have a lot of counters. I that's mean, true. like yeah. these two have a lot of counters. Like Mason and Dan have counters, but like th- no one else has a ton. Yeah. And uh, Grand Abolisher, if I can resolve that, then yeah. they cannot cast anything on my turn. Uh, yeah, Abolisher's good. And if I, you know, if I cast it with the Cavern of Souls, they can't. So, right, right. You know, I, I think so, you've got a decent anti counter suite. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm hoping it'll work. Yeah. All right, last question. Uh, what do you predict your record to be? Not good. <laughs> this is not a casual format. These people are way better than me, but I'm just here to have fun. Good. So whatever. You're gonna get a win. Yeah. I might get a one or two. Okay. Who knows? Well, that's yeah. what I mean, the the goal is to get some wins, but I'm not trying to um, put too many expectations on myself and just have a good time awesome okay yeah. well have a good time that's all yeah. we want to ask do the best so. that i can all right get, get you some beers get you some pizza have a good time let's do this yeah. uh could you ask max to come in for me please oh, okay max, max can yeah. we get you in here please no, he's not he doesn't oh. hear this oh, okay. when you go outside oh okay <laughs> <laughs> but also max can we get you in here please if you are listening like a dirty bastard <laughs> thanks Heidi. Thank you. all righty uh, I had I did not see chat there, folks, because I had my uh, draft list up. So oh, we're just singing about scrubs over here. And exactly, I don't want no scrubs. Uh, yeah. Got, uh, Mike predicts a five and two for himself. Mike predicts a five and two for himself. Jason predicts a two and five. Jason predicts a two and five. Yeah, I believe Darian also. Darian also went with five and two, so a lot of high hopes and a lot of low hopes. We'll see. All right, Maxim- five and twos in the grab. Maximilian Schroeder, please pull yourself into the camera over here, What's sir. What's up? A little more, a little more. Scoot up close to me, All baby. Right, there you go. All right, as I said, so Max and I go way back Just as uh, fellow L2s in the judge program. When uh, did you start? Like 2012, 2011? 2011. 2011 was my L1, 2012 was my L2. Same. Yeah. Funny how that works. Yeah, funny how that works. So, uh, so Max was on my short list of people I wanted to get involved. Max moved out to Kansas City, and I don't get to see him anymore. Same. Uh, but it's good to have him here. Uh, Max, as I said, is, a, is an authentic vintage player, right? He comes yes. in this from, I have fully powered vintage decks. Had. Had. <laughs> point. It's oh, a yeah. long story and a sad one. Well, I mean, you know, all those cards move. Uh, you right, know? exactly. <laughs> those, we got to live the dream. Right, those it. cards liquidate and uh, those cards sell things. Uh, so how do you feel about your draft, Max? Oh, boy. Um, this is a big, fat question mark. So I felt really good about how I started, and I feel very uncomfortable about how I closed it out. I feel like I drafted the powerful cards I needed to at the start. And then I just was like, I got greedy with trying to like, you know, maybe if I can keep going and just let's grab the most undervalued card mode for a little while longer, then I can close it out because I'll be wide open. And I just, I don't think I closed the door fast enough. Okay. Okay. Um, So, you know, one thing I, I, I see, and we often see with especially early drafters in this is a lack of sideboard cards. How do you feel about your game two and three? That is exactly what my concern was when I realized, oh no, I have gotten too greedy with the let's take good card strategy. I'm not going to have sideboard slots. But I figured, all right, well, the best thing I can do is try to make my deck as crazy as possible game one. So let's try and draft some degenerate enablers like Gemstone Cavern, see if we get there. And then game two, go to more of a controly shell that happens to have a reanimator package if we can do it. It's going to be pretty bad, I have a feeling, but I mean... Well, you got some steals here, right? Like, like Jace Finch Prodigy is not a 26 pick. I right? cannot believe that card. Would like, that be. card's normally a top 15-ish. It's normally around 15, 10 yeah. to 15 range. Um, so I think that's a good steal. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got all the tutors, right? Yeah. I, um, once I realized I could get D-Tutor, Vamp Tutor in roughly reasonable position, I was like, you know what? I think that's the one. We're right. just going to pull the trigger and see what happens. Well, I mean, even grabbing Imperial Seal there is the extra, right? Like, that's yes. the kind of, like, do I even run three tutors question at right. that point. You yeah. Know? I think I might have to game one just because, like, I have to get ahead or win and win, and then okay. game two probably gonna board that out. All right, uh, you're, you're 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 so I think you got so I, one thing I think about reanimator is that it goes well with another package, but not necessarily storm, which often happens. Mm-hmm. But I think it needs like uh, either reanimator as a backup with some aggro, or I like your idea of the planeswalkers here. Uh, are there any planeswalkers you think you sh- that would have been better that you could have grabbed in the this suite? 
better? I'm not sure. So, like, obviously, there's really good walkers in Bug, like Jace the Mind Sculptor. And one thing I was actually thinking about was Gris the Hunger Tide. But the problem was I just didn't have the slots. And I really right. needed to finish out. Like, I, if I don't have a primary strategy with this deck, what am I doing? So right. I figured I got to close it out. And you know what? Sorry, Gris. You're going to have to wait till the next one. Right. Now, Gris is good. And you're, you're right, though. Like, this is going to become a slots question. Right. That's very good. Yeah. Um, I, what, any cards that you missed? That, any, what do you um, miss that you think is... So one thing... Uh, I missed Ledger Shredder. Definitely missed Ledger Shredder. And when I saw that pick, I was like, oh my god, I even wrote this down last night. Yeah. Do not miss this card. Yeah. And I missed the card. Ledger Shredder has not, to my knowledge, been drafted in a reanimator package yet. It's yeah. been drafted in a, in a close. There was a like a, a flash list that had a small reanimator shell that had it. Yeah. Um, and but then, it seems really at home and good in a reanimator package, right? Yeah. And then like... The, the surprise 13th pick reanimate from Mike really shocked me. Like, it didn't seem like he was pivoting into that archetype. He just took it for value, and I was just like, right. 